Babu, you might want to start. Okay, so I guess we're live. So for watching and most respected judges, the participants and everyone out there, Assalamu alaikum and hello. I welcome you all to the grand finale of Omaka Online Public Speaking Competition. So for those of you who don't, do not know, Omaka is an online event management and charity organization, which basically is a youth charity organization. And this public speaking competition, this is the first event hosted by Omako and the largest national online public speaking competition till now. Today we have our 12 brave souls who reached here by competing with nearly 12,000 participants. And today, <laughs> and today in the battlefield, they will fight with their words and establish what they believe. So let's hop right in. The participants will get four minutes to deliver their speech. After three minutes, a warning will be given, and after four minutes, the final indication will be given. So, Ketan Jim. All right, I guess the first thing that we have to do before starting this competition is we have to introduce our very prestigious and valuable judges. We really have to do that. So let me just break it down. We have our first judge, none other than Muxetul Islam Alif, like people amongst you who do M events, you probably know this guy. This guy has been chaired and vice chaired in different M events. He has been a chair of mine too just a few days back. I really know this guy. I really admire this guy. He is a very perfect man when it comes to judgment and this type of criteria. He also has started his own platform, which he termed the Mon Discourse. The MUN discourse where he interviews people who have taken their act, who have taken their motions to actions. You might want to check that out too sometimes because you might want to get acquainted with people who are pro MUNers. And that's all about Muxutu Islam. If we are really proud to have you here, sir. We have our second judge, Varis Aziz Akash, who is another pro MUNer and a great public speaker. He has been a judge in different other competitions and also the EB in different MUNs too. He is an ex cadet of Mizapur Kai College, note that down. And just after leaving college, after graduating from college, he has started integrating himself into M events and public speaking platforms, and he has become one of the most successful persons today. We are proud to have him today as well. And then we have a man who, um, I don't really want to mention his name, because whenever I mention his name, I get this type of creeps all the time. So here we have Siam Shahid Noor from University of Harvard. And he's like my mentor. Yeah, like if I am successful by a bit today, then I can give 90% credit to this guy. This guy is the IPSC national champion of 2016 and successfully represented Bangladesh uh, in the United Kingdom in the international rounds. This guy is a very perfect public speaker and also a very perfect debater. I remember talking to him and I remember, you know, just looking down to him when he was on stage and he was delivering his speech and I was like, my mouth was open all the time. I really admire this guy and you people will do too. Okay, Mahabub. Okay, so have... our fourth judge is a, another talented face. Most of us know him very well, Mr. Sakib Ahmed. So he is the IPSC International Public Speaking Competition National Round Champion for the year 2020. I know him very well and he's a man of ideas. He comes up with a lot of innovative ideas in his speech and he's really good at that. And besides all of this, he is a talented musician and also a talented painter. So he likes to do, we can see in his stories, in his Facebook stories that he posts a lot of songs and they're amazing. So at presently he is studying in Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology and, and he's a really amazing person, I must say. Okay, our fifth judge is the CEO of ESCOM and an ex tamara So I suppose most of us know him very well because we see him all the time. So it is Mr. none other than Mr. Rafsan Mahbub Chaudhry. Okay, he's a double degree graduate in Bachelor's of Business Administration from East Delta University and an LLB honors from University of London. He was the former president of East Delta University Culture Club and the founding president of Newcastle Law Academy Debating and Moting Club. He is also an IELTS instructor at Delta Immigration and, and is the marketing manager at RR Enterprise. So all these are his achievements. But to say personally, he is a very well-behaved man. He is an amazing personality. So our last judge, our sixth judge, is none other than Deepra Protak. We all know that, that a few days ago, we saw that the RYC Global, they hosted an online international public speaking competition and they, it went huge. They got a huge publicity. So he, he is mainly known as the CEO of the RYC Global. So 
and at present he is the show host of the Bangladeshi Perspective and also a freshman at the University of Michigan. So that's all. That's the all of the judges we have today to evaluate our participants, and I'm sure all the participants are very much lucky to have them as their judge. All right, I guess without making any further delay and wasting our time introducing ourselves, we can move down to the participants. But before that, um, I'd, like to, I'd like to just notify the judges that after I mention the name, you have your spreadsheet document, you find the name, and then there are the marking criteria. You can input them directly in the Google, Google spreadsheet, or you can write it down in, your, you know, in some paper and then post it later on. It's completely all right. It's not an issue. And I would also like to advise or I'd like to encourage the judges and the core members to ask questions, relevant ones, which are which goes on with the speech of, uh, that was delivered by the participants so that we can evaluate the answer of the question as well. So with that being said, I guess we are going to move on to our first participant, who is none other than Nasif Alvi Hawk. Nasif Alvi Hawk from SCC. He's our first participant, so let us go directly to him. Let us yeah. hear his speech. Sir, are you there? Nasif yes. Alvi Hawk. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Am I audible? audible. You are perfectly okay. audible and you are visible too, I guess. But I would suggest you to maybe lower down your camera so we can see up to your waist at least to evaluate your body language and gestures. Is it okay? Yeah, it's all right. So how are you feeling? Like, are you nervous? Are you prepared? Or are you what? Um, not that nervous, actually. Just excited that I'm going to... It's the first time I'm in the final round of in online public speaking. So I'm very excited that I'm going to show myself to everyone. And it's truly a great opportunity. I'm very much delighted to have this opportunity. Oh, that's really cute to hear. All right. So I guess you are ready. We don't have any issues, yeah. so we can start. Okay, so, so should I start? Yeah, I'm just going to say that your time starts now, and then you're going to start your speech. Okay, so can I start? Your time starts now. 1720, the plague. 1820, the cholera outbreak. 1920, the Spanish flu. And here, in 2020, we are facing the coronavirus. After the widespread of coronavirus from March 2020, the whole world has been confined inside their home. People have been pushed inside their home. All the schools and colleges and the offices have been shut down. Coronavirus has a great effect on our life. Coronavirus has stopped the normal flow of our life. Now let me share so let me share a true story with you. A story of an athlete whose name is Yasin Hussein. Yasin Hussein is an athlete of Bangladesh Jute Mills Corporation. After the outbreak of coronavirus pandemic, the athletes of Bangladesh Jute Mill Corporation lost their job. Can you imagine Yasin Hussein, the man who won five gold medals in the national cycling competition, the man who has who has participated in the 2016 SA Games, the man who has participated in the 2014 Glasgow, Glasgow Commonwealth Games. This Yasin Hussein, this athlete is now working as a day laborer. How pathetic is that? Only because of the coronavirus, a lot of people are losing their opportunities. A lot of people are losing their future. So coronavirus has put a great effect on our life. It has stopped the normal flow of our life. Because of this coronavirus, half of the people of the world are now in risk. And the, as the World Health Organization says, now, uh, now leaving the coronavirus, let's go to another topic. That is the ongoing conflict of the world. Let me start with the most humanitarian crisis that is going in Yemen. Yemen is now facing the most humanitarian crisis in the world. Well, a lot of people are dying in Yemen. Up to now, 100,000 people have died in Yemen as far the report of United Nations. And just think about Syria. What is happening there? 400,000 people have died. Maximum of them are in fear of airstrikes in each and every second of their life. Now, we have to think something. Why are these things happening? Because a dark time has come in our life. We are facing the darkest times of our life. We are facing a very bad time of our life in this century. Well, in this century, we are going through the coronavirus pandemic. We are going through different crises. 
So we are living in the darkest times of this century, but we should not give up. We should not give up the hopes because in 1720, in 1820, in 1920, we face pandemics. We have overcome those obstacles. So if we have the patience, if we wait, surely the sun will rise. Surely we will get the desired vaccine for coronavirus. 23 organizations around the world are working for the vaccine of this coronavirus. Now, let me talk about the Syria and the Yemen issue. Last minute. The World War I, the World War II. They have gone and we have faced the World War I and the World War II. They are over. So why not Syria and Yemen? Of course, we can stop these things. So in my speech, I have shared two circumstances, the coronavirus and the ongoing crisis in the world. So if we think, if we are looking at these two things, we can see that we are living in darkness. We are living in shadow. But we have to wait because one day these things will go away. These things will be gone from our life. And then we can start our life newly. We can start our life again, just the way we used to go, just the way we used to go. The, the children, they will go to school again, our home and our everything. We can, we can come out and we can feel the freedom of life again. So I just tell everybody to keep some patience, to wait for the sun to rise because still it's night and the night is very short. So stay home, Time stay up. safe. Thank you everyone. Um, thank you so much, Nasif Abhihaq from SSC. That was a very beautiful speech. Now, do we have any questions from the judges or the core members? Um, Sanjeev, I Rafsan guess we... Oh, Rafsan Bhai, yes, sure. Uh, hello, Nafis. First of all, hello. congratulations on making it to the finals. And Thank you. Uh, my, my, my question is that you have said we will be overcoming the whatever problems we have. And you have given examples of major issues uh, currently going on in the world, right? So yeah. you have given references to the previous times. And my question is, how is a person or how is a, a society be able to hold it together in order to go through this, you know, pandemics or global issues or whatever is going on? I mean, you said that we have overcome it, but how, how do we hold it together? How do we get our brain straight? How do we get our stuff straight? Okay, so if I speak about the prison context that is going on, that we can see the coronavirus it is going on. So for that, the people who are working as the frontliners, they are the doctors, the scientists who are working day and night for inventing the vaccines. So we have to encourage them. We have to show our respect to them. That is what we can do for them. Now, let me come what we should do, how we should face this situation. So... A word is that prevention is better than cure. Surely we should stay home. We should uh, maintain what the instructions are given for us. And we should go through the instructions. We should go through all the safety measures which we can, which will keep us safe from the coronavirus. So these are the things that we can do, or these are the things which everyone are suggesting us. Now, if uh, if you if you uh, ask about the past, that what happened actually in the past, the people they did the same thing. All of them came together for a solution. Just think how the World War II ended. United Nations was formed, and all the people they just came together. All the world leaders they just combined together to make an end to all the wars, to make an end to the conflict going on. So the same thing we have to look for the same thing. We have to learn from the past. We have to learn from the, our ancestors what they did. That we have to sit together for for removing the conflicts that are going on through the world. Well, that's what we can do. Thank you. Thank you, Nafis. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Nasif. That was really great. And do we have any other questions from anyone? Judges or the core members? Yeah, I've been raising I've been raising my hand. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry. <laughs> okay. uh, sorry, the pro, we just have to wait a while. All right. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, Nasif, hi. Um, so my question is, uh, you've talked about past references and past conflicts. So uh, do you think it's factually 
logical to draw parallel or to draw comparisons between uh, something that happened hundred years ago and something that's happening right now. Uh, factually speaking, you've made a you've made a lot of emotional uh, arguments in your speech that we should do that, we should do this, but. Uh, Practically speaking, do you think how feasible, uh, how feasible or practical it is to actually draw parallel with incidents that happened hundred years ago and incidents that are going on right now? Okay, thank you for the question. I uh, I was expecting such type of question from the audience because uh, I just when I just bought these things. I was just expecting that. Okay, why I have bought the past evidences? There's a reason to show that uh, the topic is that. If the darkness it comes, surely the sunlight it can remove it. So I just wanted to show our past that what happened in the past. In the past, we have faced a lot of pandemics and we have overcome those pandemics. We have overcome those problems. So it means that darkness it will not stay for it will not be permanent or it will not stay for it will not uh, stay for all the time. So at once at one time the morning will come. At one time the sun will rise and our problems will go away. So just to make everyone recognize this just to inspire everyone that what happened in the past and how we should take our learning how we should take the inspiration from the past i have shown this type i have shown these references thank you thank you interesting um can another question be entertained yeah yeah sure sure please go on yeah perfect um Hi, Nasif. I hope you're doing really good in this pandemic and you're safe and sound. Um, I have a really interesting question and it's divided into two posts. So first of all, as we all know, uh, you said one thing clearly that we learn from our mistakes, right? And just uh, in accordance to that, we know that the United Nations came into formation because the League of Nations failed, right? So the League of Nations was there and as it could not be put into action, it failed. So do you think that currently, right now in the pandemic, we are in the face of correctness or we are in the face of something wrong? And what does uh, we hold for humanity for the future? So about the crisis that is going on in the world. Exactly, sir. And you also mentioned someone who is a very prominent uh, athlete who is now a laborer. So in accordance to that, uh, are we in the face of correctness or wrong? And what does humanity hold for the future, according to you? Okay, uh, according to me, as the topic is that darkness comes and it fades away. So today, because of the coronavirus, someone who was an athlete, who was something bigger, has now become a day laborer. So because of the pandemic that is going on, we are facing a fall in our life. But we have to hold the patience. And do you know what that athlete said? Well, I collected the information of that athlete from a newspaper. And that athlete, he said that he is working as a day laborer for his family, but he is keeping the hope. He says that I'm happy with that because I know that I am living and I am leading my life. So one day when the coronavirus will go away, surely I will be called again. I will again find myself in the track. So he is in, he is hoping that yes, he will one day he will come back to the place where he was. So like that man, if we just keep our hopes, I think that will be a great task. Now, if we speak about the crisis, uh, if I talk about the crisis, that is what actually the world leaders are doing. We can see that they are actually uh, they are actually engaged in war with each other, like U.S., Korea, Russia. What they're doing. So actually, uh, what we should do is that. We all should, all the nations, they should take the step which was taken after the World War II. All the leaders, the major leaders, they sat together. But now the leaders, they are actually not, they don't actually want to sit together. They just, they're just denying themselves. So actually, we are uh, somewhat deviated from the right track. We have to bring out, so we have to make our mentality like that. We have to make our mindset like that so that we can come to the right track. And the time we will come to the right track, and if we keep, if we come to the right track and keep on going, that will be enough. Thank you so much, sir. That really answers my question. Thank you. Um, so with the discretion of the CEO, I myself would like to ask a question, if that's okay. And if we are not interfering with the time limit. All right. Yeah, sure. So 
my question was that time and again you were speaking of patience now the topic says that the light will devour the darkness where we can really see patience because if you wait for the whole night you're going to see the sun will arise and then that uh, darkness will be devoured by the sunlight but if we are talking about this pandemic we cannot have patience this is not an automatic process i mean the night will not be devoured by the light but that easily if we just sit alone at our homes so if you believe that then that's okay but if you don't believe that then how do you put an interpretation to the topic provided okay about the patience that if i don't believe in having patience that's the question right no the real question was how do you interpret the topic with patience i mean you see the sun will rise and i will go away it's a complete automatic process your patience is really required but in case of covid-19 pandemic pandemic patience is going to do nothing you see it's not an automatic process we had to do something by ourselves so how do you interpret the topic that was my question okay so fact is i'm talking i'm just a, a normal human being i'm not a doctor i'm not a frontliner who is working in the front so i was speaking on context of people who are like me that uh, if we just just i was talking about the people like me that we will be having the patience we will be hoping that the world will get a vaccine the frontliners they are working the doctors the scientists they are working with the vaccine the people who are related to the defense they are here for maintaining the discipline so i was talking on the context of ordinary people that what we should do we have actually i'm not a doctor so surely i cannot try to create i cannot try to uh, invent a vaccine it's not possible for me on this context context so what i can do what i can do of my capability is that i can stay home i can give everyone inspiration i can have patience so that was the thing that is how i want to interpret thank you uh, so uh, i get it i guess i get it all right fine it's okay so mahbub you have the floor so thank you very much nasif so thank let's you. move on to our second participant our second participant is humaira afia mim apu are you there yes am i audible and visible yes you are so how are you apu Uh, all good. So, how are you feeling? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Kind of nervous. Kind of excited. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, do you need some time, like five or ten seconds, to wrap it all up? Uh, no. I think I can start right away. So yeah, we can move on. So your time starts in one, two, and three. Long time ago. A fat boy was born with a big head. His parents were tensed. Gradually, his physique shrunk to an okay size. His parents sighed in relief, but more was yet to come. This boy wasn't talking at all until he was four. Being dyslexic, words were hard for him to pronounce and spell. Up until the age of nine, he barely could form a full sentence only after repeating by himself again and again. This made him seem weird, so no one made friends with him. His teachers ignored him as an average student because of his slow learning. He was left alone with his violent bully. But this boy proved his genius and gained the place again. As he was not liking the traditional teaching method of schools, he started to teach himself at the age of twelve. Frustrated with the system, he dropped out of school at the age of 15 and left his country. He returned to give his college entrance exam, but failed. For the second time, he retook the exam and passed. But even in his college times, he argued with his teachers and questioned them of their teaching methods of only memorizing. And he was labeled as rebel. And he was. passed out because of his independent thinking because of this he was not attending any class and he was requesting his friends to attend his exams to pass he lost his passion for physics for a whole year his grades were poor he almost did not graduate from college because of his attitudes his teachers did not recommend him for any job and he could not find any stable respected academic job for a whole decade he write letters to those people and kept begging for 
for a job and finally settled being a third class agent clerk. Be before his father died, he addressed his old son as a major failure and this left him heartbroken. After some time, his daughter died. He faced a divorce and because of war, his family had to flee for their religious belief. But despite of all this, this man never stopped chasing his dream and passion of physics. Instead of his boring job, he found his time for his passion and love. He wrote his first scientific paper and got rejected. After two months, he again wrote a paper and got rejected. No one was interested in a paper written by a mayor clerk and he was questioning his own intellect. For the third time, he wrote his paper and this time there was no turning back. His paper got recognized. Later that year, he was published with the fourth paper and this revolutionized the history, past and future of science. This year was 1905 and called a miracle year when a Clark published four successful papers on a four completely different topic. He was awarded with Nobel Prize and his time is recognized by him. We all know this man by the name of Albert Einstein. A study in America states, if you could ask one question to God, what would that be? And the number one question was, why God gives us pain? This man once said that in the face of difficulty lies opportunity. He had plenty of reasons to quit and to fall into the big dark pit of depression, but he never gave up. Every time he was punched down, he again bounced back. So whenever you feel like running away, being hopelessness, remember one thing, no matter how much depression haunts you like a ray, it can be hung down with a slight ray of faith. Time up. No comments on the speech. So does anyone have a question on the speech? Judges or core members? Muksatul uh, bhai, I guess you have a question. No, I don't have any question. I don't have any question. Oh. All right. So I guess we can. Uh, oh, wait, Rasan bhai has a question. Hello, Humaira. First, so far, Hello. congratulations on making it to the finals. Okay, my, my 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 question for you is: um, given the topic, are you trying to say that never giving up is the only way of the morning light? Yes. Uh, if you just uh, you, we are gonna face difficulty, and life is not a beta process. Let's all be realistic. No matter how talented we are. Albert Einstein, the world's greatest genius, but he was facing a lot of troubles regarding his own ability, regarding uh, outside circumstances. But he never gave up. And if we keep trying, then only we can see the light of uh, the sun of uh, the hope. And if you think when the uh, when the sun sets down and you wait for a long time, but you still give up hope. You still keep a hope in your heart that no, I will see the sun. So just never give up and eventually, inshallah, we all will succeed. So I have a small follow-up if you do, if you want to take the sure. question. So um, my follow-up question is that um, as, as you have mentioned in my, uh, as you've answered in my previous question that um, at the end of the day, if you do not give up, only then you can uh, move forward and so stuff like that. So you know, if, if, if a person is handicapped and he cannot do anything and or, or a person is quadriplegic and he cannot do anything and stuff like that, at the end of the day, how how can a person hope? I mean, not giving up, I understand. But what about the people that has got literally no hope and they are committing suicide and stuff like that? How would you say that this is how you take some hopes? I mean, previous references, I understand. How do you get the hope? Uh, basically, um, the title of my speech, um, I, have a, I wasn't asked of it, so I couldn't give it. So the title of my speech is Faith is the Hope. 
faith is yeah. a hope in the face of hopelessness and you mentioned about a guy with no limb so i know this public speaker nick buzi uh, buzi say uh, i'm sorry if i pronounce that wrong uh, he's a limbless um, public speaker he was born with no hand and no legs so now uh, i when i know him, when i knew his story um, he was hopeless uh, at the uh, at the very beginning of his life because he had nothing he can work towards and uh, have success but uh, eventually he found this personal relationship with his god with his jesus that uh, any man any man no matter what your disabilities are a dyslexic a uh, or a uh, down syndrome a person with a uh, blindness a person limbless you can have it and if we google nick who's uh, nick uh, mr nick we can see he's a tremendous motivational speaker and listening to his speech and his uh, speaking people cry so if you just have a really strong heart no no matter how much hard this is i'm going to be hard no much how strong the hit me i'm going to be stronger so eventually we will find it we just have to hang around just a little bit. okay thank you mara thank you so much all right so any other questions yeah i have one sure sakib bhai is gone for all I would like to say that it was a very well crafted speech i really liked it but i had some a uh, few points that i would like to share with you the first is that you actually depicted that the light that a person has that uh, the light is kind of the success after his failures you see on that the light is when he actually achieves success but don't you think that only to success you cannot actually uh, quantify the light or the happiness or a value of a person because some of the times that many people actually achieve success but that does not actually uh, culminate to their happiness and their life so in that perspective people achieve success a lot of time but it does not actually uh, culminate to uh, their life as a whole they are not actually happy with their success in that case what is actually your uh, opinion regarding those people actually have achieved success but they are not okay uh, pardon me uh, i just want to clarify your question uh, so i'm repeating it uh, so you were saying that if someone achieves success and they are not happy uh, so that is not a success actually eventually that is not a success so what they can do and how they can hope in that case am i right yeah that's right okay exactly so that. if someone uh, succeeds so that is sort of like uh, okay i'm a successful person but i'm not happy there can be several reasons for that perhaps that's not the success he wanted for himself perhaps uh, he missed out something in life chasing for that success and he missed out a lots of things so actually happiness is a a very big thing happiness uh, if we see a bigger picture happiness just doesn't come from success happiness just just doesn't come from hoping happiness uh, uh, is a accumulation of a lots of things and even if you was you have succeeded in this context if you have succeeded but still you are hopeless mm, let's just pause for a minute let's just don't run and let's just try not to be poor to all more than that i have to run 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 just let's pause for a minute and think is this the correct way am i going is this the thing that i want or if it is the thing that i want it is the is it the correct way that i'm going or uh, is there anything else that i can do or what are the things that can actually make me happy what is actually wrong with me i need to figure it out myself no one else is going to figure it out for yourself just think inshallah you will get it so uh, well, that's where to put it uh, in actually crafted answer thank you thank you so much okay so any more questions yeah i do have one sure it's over please yes hi apu i hope you're doing hi. good uh finally seeing you again um so apu i had a very um like 
Gen- I'll start off my question in a very generic quote that um, exceptions can never be examples. So considering the fact that you brought in um, Sir Albert Einstein, um, like you mentioned a lot of difficulties that she faced, but we can also not forget that this guy uh, memorized, he came up with his own uh, formula of the Pythagoras theorem when he was just 12 years old. So he is a man of uh, excellence. So coming to the fact that um, even like the, the guy that you mentioned, Nick Buzicic, even he is someone who is one of the millions, right? So just my concern is um, we say like we are talking about bringing light to the world and there might be bad days. So what is your uh, take on the other millions of people rather than Albert Einstein and rather than Nick who are just not getting the uh, particular field to excel themselves even if they try hard? So and also following to that, do you think that there is a bit of luck involved at the end of the day, even after you put in so much hard work? Okay, uh, I love that question. Uh, so Albert Einstein, he was world's greatest genius. He mastered calculus at the age of 15. But he himself quoted once that your success or your achievement is 1% of your talent and brain and 99% is hard work. Yes, uh, uh, I'm not actually saying that he's all genius and he was the master of physics. But let's see the other stuff. He was dyslexic. He was a cast out. No one liked him. He was rebel. He could not find a job for a decade. He could. He could get disheartened. He could stop there. And if he stopped there um, when he was a clerk, we wouldn't have found him. We couldn't find the greatest revolutionary theories of E is equal to MC square and the theory of relativity. That's one thing. And another thing is luck. Um, if you actually, that's a more or less, I would say that's more or less your personal belief that if you think uh, no luck is uh, there. And I, I have this personal quote of myself that luck is being at the right place at the right time. If you have the ability, if you have the intellect to be at the right place at the right time and doing at the right thing, then you are genius. No matter who you are, no matter uh, how less you are, you feel other than uh, all. No matter you are topper or the last venture, you will succeed if you just keep trying and never give up and do hard work. Thank you so much, Abu. That answers my question. Thank you. Thank you. So I guess there are no more questions. So thank you very I, much, I Abu. Thank you very much okay the person Tanjin, again that's too much motivation to consume in a day oh my god <laughs> so uh, we have our next participant it's Raufur Rahman we have our next participant Raufur Rahman speaker number three sir are you there yes I am thank you um all right you are visible you are completely audible and everything is Fine. So just the participants, I'd like to remind you one thing that uh, you can mention the name of your title if you have one, uh, either at the end of your speech or wherever you want in your speech or maybe at the very beginning of what you're going to say. So just a friendly reminder, that's all. So without making any further delay, we might want to go to our next speaker, none other than Ralph Rahman. Your time. All right. Before your time even starts, how are you feeling, sir? Um, I'm, I'm good, not nervous. I'm not of this event eventually, but I'm nervous with the internet connection that I'm having. Uh, you have internet connection issues? And you think you can- I'm facing some, it? yes. Um, I guess nothing happens when you're delivering your speech. That's all for the best. Okay. So expecting the best from you. With that being said, Rafa Rahman, your time starts in three, two, and one. Okay, greetings everyone. Hope you are doing well in this exasperating global situation. I am Rafa Rahman from BVP Management Department and this is the final round of the competition. So let's get started. When it's problems and solutions, solutions will triumph every time. We are faced with millions of problems every single day and we still go out there, we fight our way through all these problems and we come home and a new set of problems await us the next day. It's a loop, you see. We face obstacles, we solve them. We face new ones, we solve them. And it goes on repeatedly. 
we are a problem solving machine if you see it that way and we are great at it we really are problem solving is the virtue of being a human being it separates us from all the other forms of life out there we are talking about problems when we are talking about problems we cannot avoid depression it may be the biggest problem out there right now it's inev- inevitable for us to talk about currently mm-hmm. Uh, in the 2020s, depression is the most severe barrier in, of, of our mental health. People are depressed more than ever. Even 15-year-olds are faced with fatal anxiety and depression. And most depressed people think that there's no escape from their problems, that they are so much entangled in their problems, it, it has become uh, impossible for them to extricate themselves from the net of uh, problems, net of the problems that they have created for themselves in the first place. Now, there's a reason for them to think like that. Imagine a physical enemy, one with a very sharp knife. He comes at you. You know where he is. You know where you are. You know what. You know if you want to flee or if you want to fight back. But for the depressed people, the enemy is 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 invisible. You cannot see it. You don't even know where he is. And that makes us believe that we cannot defeat it, that we cannot come victorious against an enemy such that. Now, but my friend, what if that enemy is created but by us in the first place? We can, we, we can then, you see, everything in this world can be overpowered. When we are depressed, we have to remember that what, are that uh, we are not the only depressed ones under the canopy of the stars and that we can prevail whatever it is. Now, think about it. Would you want a life without problems, one without any sort of challenges? Uh, I don't know about you, but what would be the definition of like uh, a world without problems would be a definition of hell for me on earth? I mean, life is exciting. And beautiful because life is not constant. You want something today, you get it tomorrow, and it's not so exciting anymore. Now you want something else. One minute that's, left. The, that's the definition of life. We don't want a constant happiness. Rather, we want a constant alteration in being happy and being challenged. Doing so will come across walls that we'll believe are, are impenetrable, but that's not how it is. Problems and the solutions are just like the shadow a fire creates and the fire itself. One doesn't exist without the other. They cannot. You cannot find shadow if there is no light source present. Similarly, you cannot find a light source that doesn't cast a shadow. Problems are produced with their solutions. They might just take a lot of our time to be found. They are there. We have to remember that there's light at the end of every time. We just we don't we just don't know how long the tunnel is going to be. Thank you everyone for having the patience to hear me out. I really wish I could say something more on this, but I also want to respect the boundary of the four minutes that I've been given. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ralph Roman. That that was really amazing. Well, we really loved your speech a lot. I personally did very much because I'm a man who is suffering from depression for the last seven days and I really find your speech very inspiring. Thank you so much. So um, with that being said, do you have any, do we have any questions from the judges or the core members? Okay. Uh, I guess we have a question from Rafsan Pai. Rafsan Pai, the floor is yours. Uh, I would like to congratulate you, Rafur Rahman, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, uh, for yes, making it to the finals. And well, you have said one sentence, which is depressed people, the enemy is invisible, something of that sort, right? Yes. So when you say depressed people, the enemy is invisible, are you trying to say that depressed people are depressed because of no reason? Like they're just, just depressed because they want to be depressed? I mean, why are uh, depressed no, people uh, depressed? Is there no reason behind? <laughs> no, I, I'm definitely not saying that. But what I'm referring to here is that for the depressed people, the, the I mean, other problems that we face, it has uh, those has a physical mean. I mean, there there is something physical that we can do to avoid those problems. But for the depressed people, you cannot do anything physical. Like 
uh, you like you are feeling bad, but you 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 don't even know why you are feeling bad. That is the depression. That is the depression. The invisible enemy. You don't know where it is. Okay. Uh, I have a small follow up, Rafur. Uh, if you don't mind, would you like to take that? Yes, yes, yes please, sure. Okay, so uh, my follow up question is actually. When you said that uh, some depressed people are there, uh, okay, let me just give you a scenario, which is like, say for example, I have taken loan from a bank of 50 lakhs and I have invested in a business and because of this pandemic, uh, my business has halted, my interest is rising and I'm about to lose my home and I have fallen into severe fatal anxiety or fatal depression. Like, do I have an enemy or I am just depressed? what's happening here if you please clear the question again uh, it would be helpful okay the, the question is that if i have a massive loss in my business and i'm about to lose my home and i have fallen into fatal anxiety or fatal depression i would like probably kill myself right now because i would have to live on my streets so what sort of a depression do you like oh categorize this as all right, I've got it. So first thing that I would like to say here is that my theme was not about depression. All right, I was just, uh, I was taking depression as uh, a mean to make you understand the bigger, bigger picture that I was delivering. But here, if that is the, that is the situation that I'm feeling that you are taking a loan from your bank and you're um, having a major loss and it, it's being depressing for you. In that case, uh, surely, I, I believe that the enemy is within yourself. I mean, uh, you have to fight. I mean, you have to fight against your depression. All right, there are uh, tons of people who will who, who has loans from from this this amount that uh, you, be, you will be overwhelmed to even here. But they are keeping up. They are not thinking about like losing their life, losing your life. Committing suicide is never an option. It should never be. It should never be in the book. That is my answer to your question, sir. Thank you, Rafur. Thank you very much. Uh, th that was a good answer as well as a good question. All good questions come from Rafur, I guess. Rafur is always the producer of good questions. All right, fine. Okay, do we have any other questions? Yes, I do. Uh, okay, so Mutsetu, sir, the floor is yours. Yeah. Um, so I will be turning off my turning on my camera because I'm having some internet issues. Uh, so uh, hello, sir. Uh, you talked about mental health. Uh, my question is a very general question. Uh, uh, in light of everything that you said, in a patriarchal society such as ours, with all its flaws and whatnots, uh, where many things are overseen and mental health being one of them. How do you think that, uh, do you think mental health is a priority for people who's losing their job? Uh, do you think they care at that point what my mental health is or what is it? I guess my question would come down to is uh, because of all the stigma surrounding mental health in our society, how can we as a Bangladeshi society promote the culture of mental health and make people know that, you know what, uh, suicide is not the solution? Uh, so how do you think we can promote it in our culture, in our society? All right. So the question is, how can we promote that suicide is not an option, right? Yes, yes. So first of all, we have to look up at like, even now, people don't believe that mental health is an issue in our country. All right. And that is, that is a major one. I mean, you have to let them believe that may, mental health just as important as physical health. They don't, they don't do that. I mean, you find someone on the street and you ask them if they're, if they're feeling good or bad, they will uh, tell you about all the physical needs, all the physical gains, all the physical problems that they're, they're facing. But never, ever they will say that they're facing a mental issue. Because to them, to the Bangladeshis out there, mental health is nothing. All right, you have to first deliver the message that mental health is as important as uh, as just the physical health that we are having. So we have to preserve both of this. 
we we have to uh, like deliver this message first only then we can tell them that suicide not not an option and everything like that thank you sir all right do we have any other questions yeah uh, am i audible yes sir you are audible so the floor is given to the proposal uh, hi, Rafir Bhai. I hope you're doing really good and this uh, quarantine is treating you really well. Um, I have a very, uh, as uh, you have brought in mental health, I have a very unique and interesting question which I myself do not know the answer of. So I will give two examples as I give this speech. And this is a very controversial example, but of course, uh, controversies are also accepted by a lot of people, right? So the first example yeah. I'd like to give is about... Uh, Mr. Late Sushant Singh Rajput and people still do not know that whether it was a suicide or a murder. But my question is, um, right after he made a movie about mental health and he lost his life, doesn't that create a very bad example to the people who were actually looking up to him to combat a thing like this? And again, um, coming to and again, an institution like 10 Minute School, where people who used to uh, who are known for promoting education are actually questioned of spreading negativity. So, sir, my question lays down to this, that when notable figures who promote certain things, let's say mental health in this case, are again questioned for what they do. Um, do you think that this creates a negative impact in the society? And according to you, how can we deal with it? OK, thank you. I have got your question. So the first thing that I would like to say is, for me personally, I don't. I mean, I don't. Be, I don't believe in one thing, not at all. I, I don't believe that people can be in others' shoes. I don't. I, I just completely disagree with this. All right. Now today I am saying that I will uh, never commit suicide, but I don't know if if I'll be saying it after two years. All right. I believe this that our life is very much dynamic. All right. Today we are saying something. Tomorrow, I don't know. We we may not stick to that. All right. That's the way of life. The beauty of life. We are never. We are never static. We are completely dynamic. And that 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 answers your question. I, guess. I mean about Shushant Singh, Singh Rajput and about everyone. But then again, I believe. I also believe that. I mean, he is making a movie, and it's promoting that you should not. Uh, nobody should ever commit suicide and everything like that. But, I mean, that person should not be held responsible for that movie after after the movie has been released. All right. He, he, he just acted as an actor. He, he, didn't, he does not represent anything. That we have to keep in mind. If, if that is what we keep in mind, then the 10 minutes issue, school issue that we're facing currently Will will be just ignored. I mean, it 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 is not an issue to talking about to me. Thank you. That is really an amazing answer that you gave. At the end of the day, we, human beings are dynamic, and we should not hold anyone accountable for what they have represented in movies. That was a really good way of answering it, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dipro and Rao Um, Do we have any other questions? Well, I guess we don't have any other questions, so we can move on to the next speaker, Mahbub. Yeah, all right. I guess our fourth speaker is Salman Hassan. So, Salman, Hello. how are Hi. you? Am I audible? I'm feeling wonderful with all the MCC on board. <laughs> you seem like I just asked you for a cup of coffee. You're not nervous a bit. That, no, I'm that's not really nervous. Good. Really good. Oh, okay, so I are you ready? Yes, I'm totally ready. Wait, so Sadman, right. like, are you, were you studying all the time when we were delivering the speeches? Like, the participants were delivering the speeches? I see mathematical I'm formula not, formulas written. I'm not studying at all. That's mathematical formula, I'm sure. Perhaps okay. you've been studying lately. All right, all right, just leave that. Okay, Mahbub. Okay, so we can get into the speech. Sadman? Obviously. Okay, so your time starts in one, two, and three. Your Aunt Rohima storms into your room with a packet of sweets and obviously some great news. She takes a sip of her tea and declares, I will marry my nephew 
to a prince. All right. He, he, he just acted as an now, actor. He, he, didn't, he does not prince, represent anything. Princess Snow White. That we have to keep in mind. Now, we have wondered, who the hell tell, told you to do so? Anyway, she set sail for her mission, Operation Searchlight 2.0. Meeting number one, she looks directly at the face of the girl and frowns because her skin color was not up to the standard of her version of Snow White. Meeting number two, she directly frowned at the face of her parents because the girl was more healthier than the standard of Snow White. You see, let me tell you a secret. We think that all the George Floyds combined live in America. That's not the case at all. You see, in South Asia only, a fairness cream called Fair and Lovely earns 4,100 crore US dollars per year. I, I'm, I'm going to give you a moment to let that number in your mind and realize the depth of this problem. You see, we, we have been sold a lie. This lie is so ingrained in our mind that we think that body shape and skin color has something to do, something to do with people's work. We mock people. We mock girls with their skin color. We mock boys with their height. See, no, it's, it's not about racism. It's about thinking clearly. It's about being able to distinguish between what is wrong and what is right. The truth is, God loves you exactly the way he created you. And that is, why, that is exactly why you should love yourself too. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter whatever we think. If all of us would come together and think like, believe like a racist or believe like a body shamer, it wouldn't matter at all. A truth would always be a truth, and a lie would always be a lie. You see, truth is like electricity. It can only be explained by its own manifestation. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if it's just a speck of darkness, or doesn't matter if you're going through the doomsday. Truth will always penetrate through the darkness. Thank you. That's all I have to say. That's very nice pitch. Yeah. So, any questions from judges or the core members? Yeah, sure. Siam bhai, please. So, first, congrats for coming this far. Um, Thank you. Very I hope you are proud of this achievement. Um, Congratulations on finishing the speech. It's hard uh, to give a speech that too on an occasion like a final itself. So congrats on that. I had a question. I think I might have mistaken kind of uh, kind of one key point that you made in your speech, but could you clarify on it? The question I had was, are you saying that if one person is confident about their self-worth or identity, regardless of race, creed, um, color, and all the other external factors. Okay, sorry, Mom. It doesn't matter if other people form stigmatized opinion against that person. Are you saying uh, that yes, is? I, I do believe that. I do believe that if what's one thinks of his own self matters to matters to them the most than anything else whatever the society thinks that's what i believe and a follow up on that so you do not think that how a society perceives a person can have strong effect on that person's self perception of themselves. I do believe that society's way of thinking can affect his self-perception, but there should be a thin, thin line between what, what amount of society can affect his self-perception. 
he needs to be self aware of that line their their self perception their self perception okay thank you yeah okay so any more questions yeah i do have one sure please so go on all right source your hi salman bro i hope you're doing good hey bro yeah so salman i had a question as you brought out the uh issue of the recent racism incident that happened yes. in uh the united states of america i had a question that um like i will first tell you a fact and then i will tell you to justify it all right so don't you think all human beings right now is also in this room including me are hypocritical in the sense that we are helping this entire uh, racism incident just by using the hashtag black lives matter and not donating to the millions of organizations that are asking for funds to stop racism in the first place because how many of us have actually donated to the cause none of us we have only changed our profile picture to black we have only gave a hashtag black lives matter and we are only doing this so say this is just a clarification from you that don't you think at the end of the day we all and also me and you and also you giving this speech about supporting racism of course it helps to spread awareness but it is hypocritical because we are not directly helping the cause just a just a yeah, opinion based answer okay. uh, i understand see bro i believe that the biggest contribution that we can do in this case is changing our own mentality if if we do that if a number of people do that then a few more number of people do that that's how we eradicate this whole thing it's it's not this is not how we by by funding that this is not how we eradicate racism we eradicate racism by by changing our mentality all right perfect so sir do you think that uh using hashtags is a way of changing a person's mentality on racism well i do not i do not obviously i do not perfect thank you so much for your answer satman wish you all the best thank you so amazing so any more questions So I guess not. So we can move on to our next participant. Thank you very much, Sadman. Okay, so over to Tanjib. Now, Mabu, do you realize that this speech was for you? He was talking about <laughs> short and something like that. I guess all the time, all the time, all the time. Like something like that. All right, whatever. Let us move on to our next speaker. Okay, our I'll next speaker. Our next speaker is Moshin Nuri. Moshin Nuri from IBA. Ma'am, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, is everything all right? Are you hungry or confident yes, or hungry. anything? Same here. Same here. Um. So if we don't have any issues now, I guess we can start. Oh. An oyster once said to another oyster, "I have a great pain within me. It is heavy, and I am in distress." with pride and complacence the other oyster replied praise be to the heaven and the sea i have no pain within me i am well and whole both within and without i read these lines from a story and closed the book as a reader i am neither a sadist nor a pessimist but i cannot deny that i find pleasure in celebrating sadness rather than a happy ending because that seems more real a happy ending doesn't so while reading this story i found myself deeply connected to the oyster definitely to the sad oyster now let me walk you through every subtle dimension of similarity between the oyster and this depressed sister a oyster sleeps in peace in the depth of an ocean like a monk meditating in an ancient cave if that's what you think you're wrong Just like me and just like us a oyster is highly reactive to externalities a foreign body some say a small grain of sand others say a tiny worm attacks the oyster 
and the oyster is irritated. Just the way I am irritated and disturbed by something like a pandemic. I am disturbed when I see people dying around me, just the way you are disturbed. And because of these negative externalities, I overthink, I get sad, I make my imaginations wildest and gloomiest, and I find pleasure in celebrating sadness. Turns out the oyster does this too. When the foreign body attacks, a pain or distress is created in that place. Then the oyster also overthinks and builds around that pain. The pain intensifies, it solidifies. In that pain, even the ocean is not kind. The waves of the ocean flip the oyster again and again, just the way you toss and turn in your bed in the middle of the night, thinking of the things that trouble you. I, I could relate to the oyster, how it might have felt taking, being taken away by grief from outside and then also containing grief inside. Maybe that's why the oyster in that story said, I have a great pain within me. It is heavy and I am in distress. My fellow oysters, if you are in distress like me, the ending of Gibran's story is for you. In the story, when the two oysters were talking, they were overheard by a crab. One minute left. Oyster. To the oyster who had no pain, the crab said, yes, you are well and whole. You have no pain, but the pain your neighbor is going through is actually a pawn of exceeding beauty. Trust me. The pain you're going through today is intensifying, solidifying to build a shiny pearl. The waves of the ocean is flipping you, tossing and turning you because the continuous motion will make the pearl round and perfect. If you're going through pain today, know that the oyster's definition of pain is a pearl. The, co the coal is a past of a diamond and shadow is a remembrance of light. Thank you. So that was brilliant. That really was brilliant. All right. Uh, I'm just going to leave everything else. So right now, do we have any questions? Um, Rasanbhai, do, do we have a question from you? Um, okay, I, I, could, I guess I could ask one question. Um, okay, I, it's, it's rather... Um, I, don't, I don't know how to frame the question, to be honest, but um, the easiest way to explain it is that are you trying to say just because someone else might be more miserable than how I am, could be a shed of light on my life. Is this, is this in any way possible that someone else is worse than how I am could make me feel a little bit better because of the conversations that they were having between Austin and Crab and those things? Yes, a very interesting question. The answer is that just because you are miserable than someone else doesn't make you better. But just because you're miserable than someone oh, else, yeah. it makes a lot of possibilities because of that misery. You might not believe. Should I start over? Yes, please. Hello? I did not really hear it. Yes, please start over okay, again. Okay, okay. I hope the inter internet doesn't. Okay. Um, so um, I, I said that your question was very interesting. Um, my answer is that just because someone is more miserable doesn't make doesn't put that person in a better place. But just because someone is a more miserable straight state, they believe themselves to be miserable. And this belief, this low self-esteem might make them miss on a lot of new opportunities, which they 
might not have missed if they had greater self confidence so what i want to say that you might go through pain but this pain is actually to make you better this you are going through pain doesn't mean that your words you're going through pain means that this pain will shape you in a better way thank you motion for the answer and congratulations on making it to the finals is come is come family family i get it <laughs> <laughs> okay so do we have any other questions uh can i ask a question if you don't mind tanjim and uh, nuria putu why would i mind if you're going to ask a question i don't really get it that's a two correct correct two two cut that out all right okay uh so first of all i just want to say that it sounds weird but i won't call you apu because i heard that we both are of the same age at the end of the day so hi norshin uh <laughs> but yeah it's good to meet you again and um i really like the way you use the word oysters as a metaphor in the entire speech and i would just like to state a metaphorical question to your speech um considering the fact that uh, as you said that oysters have to go through a lot because of the wind and because of the uh, tides of the sea and but however at the end of the day they give us the pearl so it really emphasizes on the fact that even if they are facing a lot of difficulties they are coming up with the product at the end of the day but we cannot also neglect the fact that millions of oysters get dropped disrupted and destroyed in the run and only a very few percentage of them can give us very good gems very good pearls in the day so noshin when we compare this to human life does this also portray the fact that only one person at the end of the day can become special and millions of other will suffer just like the oysters thank you for the question dipro it is very true in fact the probability of getting a perfect pearl is actually 1 in 10000 it might be true that it is 1 in million as well but you know what this brings a very important issue the way we see success in this in my speech 4 minute speech i framed being a pearl as success but that might not necessarily be the case you might not end up in the jewelry shop as the most expensive pearl but you might be an exotic delicacy found only in mexico you might be the element that turns the taste and everything of a wine you might be something you might even we might discover that some oysters have miraculous medicinal qualities it can be anything just because you're not a pearl doesn't mean that you're nothing same goes for us as humans just because you couldn't achieve that goal of perfection set by other people doesn't mean you're nothing there's always a lot of opportunities and we need to decide what is best for us I couldn't have framed it in a in a better way. Thank you so much, uh, Moshina. That's that's amazing. But I just have a small follow up to that. All right. So just like uh, let's say, let me be very frank. All right. I can see Siam Bai over here. Uh, he is going to Harvard. Harvard was my dream. I ended up in University of Michigan, which is good. But of course, that is not Harvard. So similarly, let us compare oysters with human beings. All of them want to be pearls, but again they won't be extremely happy but they will be satisfied if they end up being a cuisine in someone's plate or if they be a delicacy in someone's uh museum or something like that but when we ask about being satisfied all right i'm just referring to the term of being satisfied do you think that is it it's possible to be satisfied a very generic question okay thank you dipro you are surprising me with your questions so what i would like to say is that how do you frame satisfaction suppose i i am one person if you bring me a pearl i i might not be interested in jewelry but i like to eat oysters more so for me the oyster that is a food is better it is always relative how we see the idea of success and our satisfaction is unfortunately built on that relativity we cannot think on our own and we should think what is important to us and that's how we should frame the ideas of satisfaction and success 
you well answered thank you so much i loved everything about your speech apart from the fact that you love oysters right <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Nashim. Um, I guess we don't have any other questions. Do you have another question? Um, no, we don't have another question. We can move on to the next speaker. I guess. Okay. I really so, regret that I had. Oh uh, well, wait. All right, all right. Let me just state a fact. You know, just, I really regret that I had not taken biology earlier in my subject selection because I don't really quite understand the mechanism of oysters. So, Moshina, you know, enlighten me someday later. All right. So, the next participant. Okay, I'd like to move the uh, give the floor to Mahbu. Yeah. So the next participant today we're having is number six, Raik Zaman. So, Raik, are you here? Oh yes, you are. You're looking. Dashing. Okay, please unmute yourself first. Is it okay now? Yeah, it's all right. No, so how are you? How are you in this quarantine? Yes, I'm fine with all my despairs and stops. So we see you have given some effort to your attire, right? Uh, kind of. Yes. So. Yeah, you look good. Okay, so are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, so your time starts in one, two, and three. 23rd February, 1986. A man died who was the only earning member for his family. After he died, the whole world became a nightmare, place of darkness to his child. His child was crying all day long and he didn't have any kind of support. But he remember one thing that he had the father's dream that he told, son, you'll be a great man one day. And with that little hope, he struggled with his life, struggled with his education. And he stood first in the BSD examination of doctors in 1996. He joined Bangladesh Army in 2002. And he's now final successful. And now he shared these stories with his children. And in the end of every story, he just tell me only one thing that for every shadow, no matter how deep it is, it is threatened by the morning light. Now, he's none but my dad, and I'm proud to be his son. Now, when I was little, I had problems to talk. I even couldn't complete one sentence properly. And one day I ran to my dad, dad, I need a solution for this problem. Dad looked at me, son, you have something in yourself. I see there's a bulb in you. You just have to light it out, figure it out. Then I asked the most significant question of my life to my dad. Dad, I don't know where the switch is even, how can I turn it on? He answered me again. Figure it out, son. I trust you. And I have I have a hope that you make me proud one day. And that was the word. You will be making me proud one day, which inspired me to work hard. I struggle with my English pronunciations, grammatical mistakes, and today I'm giving speech in front of you. So sometimes life has a cruel parts, like depressions. Sadness, melancholy, they break us, tears is about, throw us into the dustbin. And those who can't survive through these troubles, they end up their lives by committing suicide. Some become drug dealers, some become thieves, robbers. And the youngsters at our age, they end up their life in the hospital bed with a machine, beep, Beep, beep. So it's not happened that if there was little hope of light, maybe you could be One survived. minute left. Just like this, every famous movies, they give us a single message. Even there is so much darkness around us, there is light behind it. Try to figure it out. We are humans. 
and depressions and they're normal in our life and they will come and we have to fight it which is means by so many people that they lose hopes there's a hope that they can make good they can feel good they can make others happy after the corona ends whole world will be fighting with the crisis of financial problems political problems and so on but still we have to remember that we have a hope in ourselves and we have to follow it and just believe in ourselves that we can do it with that very little hope we can fight through the darkness and we have to believe we can find that light time up and to be mind this is thank you amazing right you know your speech reminded me of one thing i in i stage 4 you say said from a ship he rises up to the clouds and beside the clouds this is a rainbow <laughs> he says that behind every dark darkness there is a rainbow around every corner so all right okay just just leave it it was a bad joke all right so any questions from the audience uh, i mean the judges and the core members anyone yeah i i i, I have a question sure bhai the floor is yours yeah uh, okay so um, right how do you to define hope because you talked a lot about hope and never giving up how do you define hope we, i i believe many of the previous speakers touched on this issue but you are one of us much more centrally focused on uh, uh, around hope so how do you define hope and how do you think that people uh, who do not have hope or who's not as fortunate as you to have such an encouraging father uh, to push them in their life how do how do they find hope in their darkness dark times and how do they push forward with uh, and pursue what they whatever they want to pursue in life so i do believe that human are gifted with something which is really really special by the god and that's nothing but our consciousness and the second is hope so and if there is no one to push us from the behind we have to take belief from ourselves and we have to judge that which is angelic and which is felony and we have to follow that angelic way we have to build hope in ourselves that we can do it and it may result in self confidence and which may lead to break through the darkness and feel success in life thank you right thank you Hello. Okay, so any more questions? So I guess not. Yeah, Mahbub. Uh, sure, sure. Even though I'm a judge, I would like just like to say something. It's uh, even though I'm not a coordinator, I just like to say something too. Right? Uh, that is, is that painting beside behind you. Is that? Uh, did you draw that? Right? the painting uh, behind yes, you and, uh, i yes i drew it uh, that's a very good painting it's very symbolic i liked it and now the question mm -hmm. i would like to pose is that uh, you said that when you actually have hope you actually create a belief and you actually push forward but uh, in every uh, scenario that you actually placed there was a person who was actually pushing him forward but uh, some of the times uh, we don't actually have that kind of conditions many people actually are born in a uh, very bad uh socio economic uh, condition so what about those people how do they actually uh, come out of their uh, uh their obstacles and they actually overcome their problems and they actually find their success how do you actually yes now we live in this society and there are lots of people of different types of status and the poor people or they underprivileged when they go behind us and they sometimes the dream that like, if i could be like them and sometimes they pick the illegal way i know and this is the only thing which is the mistake and they don't judge themselves before doing a walk they don't judge their consciousness that is the work is good or bad will the result will be hopeful for me will it make me happy or will it make others happy that's what not 
understood by so many people. And for this reason, we are you now destroyed in different types of crises. Yeah, so. right. I would like to uh, just clarify one more thing. Uh, that is, what if they don't actually have, uh, suppose they have a good intentions. I'm saying that they don't have anybody to actually support them. In your story, your father actually uh, inspired you to actually go, son, you can do those things uh, in those scenarios. But what happens when like, he does not have like any person to actually like push fire? What do you actually do then? And here, this question comes, and I really love the question, and this answer is nothing but our belief and the honesty that if a work is worthy of doing and it is good and ethical, we're allowed, and if it's illegal, we have to keep us away from it. And so many people are now doing so many mistakes in their lives, and just they just don't understand three things that they hope, they have a hope, their consciousness, and if they have no one to pull forward, they have themselves, that they have two best friends, that he and himself. And we have to keep in our heart that we are something which we ease from the inside. We have to let us reflect our own heart's identity in the best way we can. And that's it. Yeah. I wanted to hear that from you and keep on painting those good paintings. Okay. I really Thank like you your painting. Okay, so I, so I have a question if you don't mind. Right. So right, uh, my question for you is that there is a huge difference between logical hope and illogical hope. I am pretty sure you are going to agree to do it. When I was in standard five, I wanted to become a physicist or rather a scientist working on a in a lab. The reason is I couldn't speak properly. Okay, so I would I would I was looking for a job which did not require me to speak. As I grew up, my hope became that I would rather focus on a job that would require me to speak, and I pursue it pursue to study law or to study marketing. So my question to you is that hope is something that drives us, right? What if the hope is illogical? What if the hope is stupid to everyone and to you yourself? Can it drive you? Can it still motivate you? I mean, if you think about it, uh, like Neil Armstrong was the first person to go to the moon, uh, like the controversial theorists keeping aside. Neil Armstrong was the first person to go to the moon, but he was not the first person to attempt it. Do you understand my point? So there are yeah. logical hopes, there are illogical hopes. So how do you measure them? And how do you still keep on driving forward when your hope is like ridiculous? So some kind of thieves are there and their hope is that I will steal something today. And there is hope which is illogical and that doesn't make any sense. And yet sometimes they succeed with that and they remain happy. But it's bad for the society, we know. That thing which has made him to be successful, that is nothing but the passion. This passion that he loves it, that thieves love stealing. And the good people, they love to help people. And that's what means by so many people. And if I say that, Somebody has failed to get their perfect job which they liked. It's just because of their passion, maybe was a little bit less strong or just a little bit less of self-confidence, some kind of it. Thank you. Thank you, Raik. Okay, so Raik, if you don't mind, I have a question too. May I go? Yeah, sure. Okay, so you see, Hope and expectations, these both are two different lines of things, you know. But hope, when it's related with a subject or you can say a person, then it gives rise to expectation in our mind. But the thing is, hope is a good thing in a manner. But expectations are not good, what I believe. Expectations cause you to suffer. So what do you want to say in this regard? How, to defer, how, how do you defer expectations and hope and how to refrain from expecting? But still having hope. And 
And now that's a good, very good question. And we have to keep in mind that the hope must be to help someone, to make good, that it would make others happy, others smile. And now if I say the robbers, they have a hope, they will rob, they will shoot, and that doesn't make any sense and it will harm people. And you ask me that the expectations, sometimes the robbers even fail when the police comes. Their expectations failed. Sometimes good expectations come to failure. And in this case, we have to keep in mind, life is like a boxing game. We don't lose when we fall down. We lose when we refuse to get up. So if we keep that hope and the passion strong, maybe I can think that we can get that very expectation which we used to have and which we dream of. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. So any more questions? I guess not. So, okay, we can move on. Sanjeev. All right. So I was thinking that since we have finished almost half of our participants, I mean, not almost, we have finished half. So do we need a break? Maybe a five Tanji minutes break? break? Do we need it? Tanji, can I turn my camera off? Yeah, sure. So I'd like to ask the respected judges that are we, are we going to need a break? Right for now? Yes, a five minutes break would be really helpful, honestly speaking. Uh, yeah, I, I also think that. I think that's it. So I guess we can move on for a five minutes break. I would like to suggest everyone to stay in this Zoom call and just do whatever you want. You know, take five minutes break, sleep for five minutes or do whatever you want. I'm going to eat. So just stay inside the call and we're going to come to you after five minutes. So our next session will start at 10.46. And our next participant is Radhya Taslim Khan. Yeah. All right.
had at the uh, good luck let's start can i start yes. radhya are you ready yeah yeah i'm ready yeah all right so your time starts in 1 2 and 3 Yesterday I slept at 7 a.m. I mean today I slept at 7 a.m. As the youngest one in the family I was expecting to be woken up by good morning sweetheart good morning my little baby wake up instead of that I was woken up by if you fear death get up from that bed right now I couldn't relate that what death has to do with me being in bed but As I fear that, as I don't want to die that soon, I got up. You see, exactly one year ago, I wasn't in this room talking to anyone. I was in an intensive care unit when I had cannula in my hand, and on the left side I had oxygen pump, and the right side I had piles of medicine. and my life was stuck in a small room filled with nurses patients and all that weird smells of medicine that time along with all of that my whole family and i had one thing in common a fear a constant fear the time might run out soon i realized then the death was not chasing me my fear of dying was chasing death and we all feared that my fear of dying and actual death would actually come up and that was we were all afraid of you see while we are walking while we are talking and while we are going out of the house or while spending that average 86400 Four hundred second on a day, we all are afraid of one thing that we are gonna die sometime. And believe me when I say that, that feeling that you would die soon makes life even more exciting. Socrates said that death may be the greatest blessing of all human blessings. From the moment we were born, we are facing a war. a wall that says nothing but that all over it we can't do anything but go towards it we can't take a right we can't take a left we cannot duck we just have to go towards it but you see even in that all of a fear you are hustling you are fighting you are fighting for your happiness you are searching your soul and that what makes life so much worthy and that also makes death even more harder you see if you compare life to a shadow and death to a light you see that life stays even after having all this fear of death just like the shadow stays even after that one dent of pain because no matter whatever you do life is always an eternal place beside death just like shadow has a place beside light because no matter whatever you say you and i we're all going to die one day but amongst all of it you have a life you have to take care of but they say that you only live once but if you close your eyes and think carefully you'll see you die once you live every single moment and every single day of your life and that makes life and death more interesting life and death were always together and will always be together thank you okay sorry i had some issue amazing speech you know comments so any question from the judges or the core members Uh, yes, I do. I do. It's sure, Mukta Bhai. The floor is yours. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, I mean, I don't want to sound too biased or anything, but uh, I I'm a person who who can relate to that speech because uh, I I often think about there's not a single day that goes by, and I think that you know what I might die the next minute. It's an existential fear, yeah. but at the same time, it also you know makes me. 
keeps me going that you know what i have to make every second count uh, yeah so um my question to you would be that you told you say that you lived in a constant fear with your family that fear was the only thing that was common right but uh do you think don't you think having this fear at the back of your mind even though i personally have it uh might be sometimes of a big burden to carry mentally speaking and in the long run might be holding us back from things we can achieve and uh just because out of fear of death we might not do something that we would have done otherwise okay so that's a very good question first of all so as you said that it has a fear that might stop us from doing anything you see you can die any moment you can die after this second i can die after this second we never know when we die but this feeling of that you may die soon i think personally that pushes you even more to the pushes you to do better because you have a fear that you might run out of time that i think pushes you more to achieve something better in your life that's what i would think about this question uh okay just to, just a follow up um do you think um i understand that it works as a very good push factor and a motivating factor philosophically speaking but um uh, do you think it's it's the best motivation to have at the back of your mind that you know what i'm going to die any minute so i'm just going to uh, uh i'm just going to live my life and do my best because uh, that same analogy and that same logic can be used in a wrong way as well like a person who who for me or for anyone in general that would be like you know what i want to succeed in life and do big things but for other people it might be the opposite you know what i don't care i'm going to ruin i'm going to have a spoiled life i'm going to party and what not because you only live once right so do you necessarily think that that's always a good motivation to have uh you know at the back of your mind because using that same analogy many people ruin their lives many potential uh intelligent many smart people also ruin their lives having that same logic at the back of their mind okay so uh i can explain this with a metaphor that a flower attracts both bees and the harmful insects it's up to that flower what it will take if you take that as a motivation that will be your motivation and if you take that as a excuse for living a life recklessly that is totally up to you i think very simply said but very well explained thank you yeah. very beautiful answer yeah i like that a lot so any more questions rafsan bhai i'm guessing you want to ask some questions yes i have a question <laughs> it's 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 rather simple um i mean i'm pretty sure every single person listening to this speech that she said can relate in some way or the other i mean i have been on in, in a you know that but for like 11 days and i came out of that as well but uh my question to you is how can death be light we do not know what's what's after that i mean if you consider the entire life a shadow and the death is the light so i mean i don't even know what's after death i mean you cannot concretely say that this is what's going to happen to you after uh death if you go religiously you might be in a worse place than world you can be in a better place than the world again if you go scientifically or some uh, a, you know in a method of an atheist that you know there's nothing after that so if you put life as a shadow then i will go uh, i mean after that i probably will go somewhere worse or i will probably end up nothing nowhere so how would you justify your statement saying that shadow uh, life is a shadow and death is light okay so the thing is that in the world when we think broadly there is not only muslims or hindus there are many people who don't doesn't even believe in religion okay so if you take that generally if you still example it as a normal person if you see that life has always a connection with death there is no life without death right just as a shadow to the light if there is no light there won't be any shadow and that's vice versa both works in the same day and both works similarly and they are i think for myself uh, for me that they are both on the same level that's why i just connected with it life and death that's it 
Oh, okay. Thank you, Radhya. I guess that answers the question. So do we have another question? Any other questions? Uh, seeing none, we can move on to our next speaker. So thank you, Radhya. That was a well-organized performance. So our next speaker is speaker number eight, Apurva Sahil. Apurva Sahil, speaker number eight. Sir? Yeah, am I audible? Are you there? Yes, you are audible. You are visible too. So how are you feeling? Nervous or confident? Feeling everything, but also nothing. Oh, that's a very wise answer. I see. I see that. I really see through that. Okay, fine. So I guess we can start with your speech. Um, so your time starts in three, two, one. Well, we all have had our shares of quarrels and arguments with our parents or family. And if you haven't had that, then you're probably a millennial spoiled brat by now. But let's not go into that. And we sometimes get so involved into fighting and arguments that we start feeling a bit of abhorrence towards them. But at the end of the day, they are the ones whom we can call our families. They are the ones whom we can rely on for our lives. And that's why it forms such a huge hole in our very soul when we lose someone so close to us. I lost my grandpa a few days ago for um, COVID-19, of course. And I never realized how empty I might have felt when someone so close to my heart just isn't there anymore. And I think a lot of us can relate to this type of um, reaction or emotion. And not necessarily because you lost a loved one, but maybe for other specific reasons. And we fall in this type of mental trance or breakdown, where, which is uh, popularly known as depression. This is what I metaphorize as the darkness in our lives or the shadow that looms over us. As much as we want to get out of it, as much as we want to get everything together, we just can't, either because we have given up, which is douche move, and or we have decided that darkness is what defines our whole life, which, of course, it doesn't. It shouldn't. Now, let's get to my perspective here, okay? The OPEC... Um, enclosure in your life can't appear unless you have seen light in the first place. If you don't know what light is at the very beginning in your life, you can't understand or can say that you are living in darkness. There's always light around the corner of your dark times. There's always a solution to your problems. You just have to have the assertiveness, the integrity, integrity to make it through that, to find the right path and get yourself together. That's why, let me bring, let bring, let's bring an analogy here of the Pandora's box myth, which I guess we have all heard of. And you see how one phenomenon is used to counter all the pessimism that was inside the gift, which is full of presence. Um, and from the past speeches, as we all have heard, it's pretty obvious, it's hope. If you have hope, no matter what you're going through, you'll make it through it. You can be an impeccable competitor against all evil that you're facing. It's like when you see light at the end of a dark, long tunnel that you have been going through in your life. It's like a ray of hope that hits your face and you go through the catacombs of darkness that you're facing right now. And then you realize that you, can live, your, then you, can realize that you can live your life at your fullest. Don't give up. Because your life is more than what you think. It has more value than you can ever imagine. Thank you. Um, that was well-decorated speech indeed. That was very nicely said. So following up, do we have any question? Uh, yes, Tanjim, I do. Uh, okay, sir, you have the floor. Okay, um, so hey, Apurva. Um, uh -huh. the, I, I really like the way you articulated your entire speech. Um, but I would like to discuss about the thing that you said that you would rather not get into. Uh, the very premise that you 
set to do uh, that was followed up by your entire speech. Like, if you never had an uh, argument with your parents, you're probably a, a spoiled millennial brat. Do you think? Do you think that's true? Don't you think by saying that? Don't you think by you by basing that as your premise for the entire speech, you're essentially saying you're essentially normalizing uh, any sort of arguments with parents. That's what you're saying, that it's normal to have arguments with your parents, bad arguments with your parents. And if you're not having that, it's not normal. You're turning out to be a spoiled brat. Uh, do you think that's a very, um, I don't know, a very right thing to say? To be honest, for me so far, all the bad arguments I've had is because something I've wanted and my parents haven't given me. So mm -hmm. let's say if my parents gave me everything I wanted, I would just go up to them and ask for a Lamborghini and they'd give me. Hmm. Right. I'd go up to hmm. them and ask for an iPhone X they'd give me. And to be mm -hmm. honest, I feel like the more they give to you and the more they stop your restrictions, the more mm -hmm. spoiled you get. You know, that's where I base my whole speech on. Uh, it also so depends on your intentions, on what you ask. Okay, well. okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. So um, you kind of like defeated the purpose of your own argument by that, you know, because basically if a child grows up knowing that, you know what, I'm going to get whatever I ask for in life. Uh, ha getting handed it over to me. Do you think that person will know the et essence of hard work and will actually, by the way, before moving on, in your defense, bad parenting do exist. And there are some parents who believe that these agreements is, equated, is equal to what we call bad way. In, in your defense, I will say that. But however, uh, getting back to that, um, you just said that uh, if parents stop giving you the things that you want, you you're uh you get more ruined do you think that's true like so so are you basically saying that parents should give their children anything that they want at any time that they're asking for it no no it depends on the things you're asking so okay if you're asking for the books that you're going to study your parents aren't mm -hmm. gonna lie or say that i'm not gonna give it to you mm -hmm. but if you're asking for something like a, a three lakh daga computer then of course mm -hmm. they're gonna restrict you from it. And is that a wrong thing? Um, it's a, it's not a wrong thing. It's it's usual. It's it should be common to tell your child no, right? Because um, the more they get, it kind of gets worse for them for their childhood. Uh, so basically, uh, you're. Um, I mean, quite frankly speaking, you are. Um, at the beginning of your speech, you said that people who never had that argument with their parents uh, might grow up to be a spoiled child, right? So and now you're saying that it's, you know what, sometimes it's okay to restrict them. So uh, I will just, I'm sure some other judges have their question as well. So I'll just say by this, that yeah, a yes or no question at the very end. Do you think that parents should have a say and parents should restrict things, uh, taking into account the intention and taking into account the things that the child is asking for. So should there be restrictions from the parents towards the children? Yes, I believe so. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for the question. Thank you so much. Um, and So I'd like to give the floor to Siam Shahid Noor to ask another question. <clears throat> Uh, hi, Purvo. Thank you for your nice speech and congrats on getting this far. At one point of your speech, you mentioned uh, your speech's uh, points analogy with the Pandora's box, and I didn't quite get that. Could you uh, rephrase it so that my noob mind can understand it better? <laughs> so I basically said that to counter all the bad things that were inside the box, there was just one good thing, one good phenomenon, which is hope. Okay, so there was illness, there's hatred, there's um, jealous, jealousy. But for, to counter all of these, there's just hope that you can have in your life. That's what my analogy was. Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, all right, so do
do we have another question? Okay, so we have a question from Rafsan Choudhury. Uh, Apoorva, um, first of all, I am uh, sorry for your grandfather passing away recently. I mean, I can relate, relate to it. I was very young when my grandfather passed away in 2012. Um, okay. Um, my question would ra rather be based on what Judge Alif was saying. Um, uh, I'm, 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 not, I'm not trying to gang up on you, but it's just that I, I just have one small opinion. What if the parents are actually arguing with the kid because they want something from the kid and the kid has not been able to deliver? Something very rational, something not that is not, um, you know, how to over exaggerate or, or, or that is something to force something on the child. Say, say for example, uh, I know that you have the ability to become an amazing, say, debater. Okay. And you have lost like seven consecutive debates. And your father said, if you do not win the next one, in that case, I will not allow you to play PlayStation anymore. So it's either incentive based or or it's it's something that you're not just working hard and you're not working on your potentials and your father says that and he wants you to work on it. What if you have an argument on that? How what would you say to that? Hmm. That's a really good question. I mean, in the argument that I was talking about, uh, but still it's a good question. I don't know, actually. <laughs> it's completely fine, Apurva. No problem. So, yeah, we can move on to someone else. It's if it's fine, if, or if Apurva wants to answer, you can go ahead. It's up to the uh, moderators. Uh, uh, all right, I guess it's completely okay. So, do we have another question? Um, are we accepting another question? I believe this competition does not have any time constraints and everyone has finished eating. So, yes, we are. <laughs> ah, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> so, I have uh, a... Anjim and his yeah. uh, was food. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, so, so, I think. So, do I have the floor for a question? Uh, yes, sure, you sure. have. Yeah, perfect. Um, so, first of all, I would like to apologize because. Uh, the internet is in Chittagong is really bad today for some reason. But um, hi, Mr. Apurva. I believe that, in other words, you are my nephew. But yeah, congratulations. And I really did not even know that you were participating in this. So this has a very uh, personal question attached to it. Considering that I saw you from being an introvert to the power infinity to participating in a public speaking contest and coming to the grand finale, and you talking about hope, what, according to you, was the sole piece of motivation and inspiration that brought you, like, just as Rafsan Bhai rose from a stammerer to a great public speaker, how did, what specific thing garnered the courage, or let's say brought the hope, as you say, in your life from being absolutely an introvert, sticking in your room, to being an absolute extrovert, participating in online public speaking competitions? Well, technically, I'm still in my room. So can't really deny that. But OK, I saw a speech on YouTube a long time back. And there was a line that I see myself from 10 years later as my idol. To be honest, that changed my whole perspective on life. Because I, from then, I kept seeing myself 10 years later. And what I would do 10 years later if I just kept sitting on my room doing nothing. And that motivated me to keep going on and try new things out and see what I find interesting. Yeah, you could say it Perfect. works as a uh, type of stimulation. Not really hope, but it also works as hope as well. All right, just a follow up. The speech that you're talking about, is it the Oscar speech acceptance by Matthew McConaughey? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. I got it. Thank you so much for the question, my man. Good luck. Uh, all right, so I guess we're done with the questions. And now, Mahabu Hassan. Yeah, all right. So let's move on. So our next participant, Adnan Saqib, he's having some issues there with the electricity. So we'll move on to our next participant. 
Sarah Marshall. Um, Marshall, are you there? Visible. Yeah, you're yeah, visible. visible. Yeah, you're visible too. So, can you please, uh, can you please take your camera a bit lower because, uh, yes, it's all right now. So, all right, how are you? I'm fine. <laughs> a little nervous. Uh -huh. All right, it's all right. So, do you need some time, a few seconds to wrap it all up? No, no problem. I can start right away. Okay. So, your time, your time starts with one, two, and three. My, my speech is titled, Be the Hero. Life isn't always rainbows and sunshine. This is something we are painfully well aware of. Reality isn't something you can run away from or can take a break from. And no matter how hard you try, there can always be something that goes wrong. But we do have one choice in our hands. We have the choice in how we live our life. Do we lament in the shadows and um, give up in our trials and tribulations? Or do we uh, embrace hope and courage even in the midst of sufferings and sorrow? Every shadow, no matter how deep, uh, or is threatened by the morning light. I say this to emphasize that uh, no matter the worst circumstances, there is always hope. Hope gives rise to courage and courage is needed to overcome the most uh, un insurmountable situations and overwhelming odds. Hope can help to conquer the unconquerable. Every shadow is threatened by morning light because light overshadows everything. Shadows represent the sorrows and sufferings in our life, and the light is hope. Uh, and the shadow, when you have hope, you have courage, and the shadows will seem powerless and they will gradually disappear. Choosing to embrace hope and courage is the one option we are blessed with in our life. Now, there may be a time where you felt depressing and despairing. The cause of your despair may be devastating, such as the death of a loved one or someone you love has betrayed you. It might be that uh, something you love has fallen away from your grasp, but it might feel as if you've lost the ground beneath your feet. But in such a time of darkness and shadows, you can choose the path of hope and courage. And slowly but surely, hope will bring forward the light in the shadows of darkness. Now, hope is not the magic wand that will automatically remove your problems. Rather, hope is the lifeline you can keep to, so that you are not overwhelmed with the storms in your life. Now, how do people embrace hope? Let me explain this with an example. A great picture has shadows and dark corners along with bright colors and light. So, in this way, we can understand that life has pain and joy, happiness and sorrow. Once you accept this reality, you can move on from your, your pain. You can you go through what you go through. So now the question is, are you willing to go through it? Now, if you are in a great crisis in any form, remember that. Have you read those stories where the hero overcomes tremendous odds? Have you cheered for the one who went through great suffering and claimed victory? Have you ever rooted for the underdog? One if minute left chance to be the hero of your own story. You have the opportunity to persevere, to fight, and to be the underdog that beats all odds. Remember that whatever is burdening you is teaching you. Whatever is confusing you is changing you. And learn to rise to the challenge and fight for yourself. Learn to hold your head high and rise above others and learn to speak with courage. If you can do that, I believe you have earned the true victory. Thank you. Okay, amazing. No comments on the speech. So any questions from the judges or the core members? If not, we will move on. What, we don't have a question? Anjim, if you have one, you can go on. 
No, I think his speech, her speech was clear and she was completely okay. So I guess we don't need to go push into the question. And plus, she has already left. No, she's here. Okay, all right. She's here. We're just going to move on to the next, next I'm speaker, here. I guess. I'm here. No, uh, it's okay. It's, it's all right. It's okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, so we can move on to our next participant. So, Sanjeev. Uh, all right. Okay, before that, I might just want to ask Sara Mashia that how did she grow such a beautiful accent? I mean, she has a good accent. Uh, I have a secret behind this. Like, are you from uh, UK and you are just a dual resident in UK and Malish both or something like that? Something like that. So she, your, I guess, your childhood was in USA or UK or in a spoken country? I used to live in the USA for seven years. She, I know I always guess right things. All right, whatever, we're just going to move on to the next speaker. Speaker number 11, Bahamid Abdullah Tashfin. Speaker number 11, Bahamid Abdullah Tashfin. Sir, are you there? Yes, sir. Am I audible? <clears throat> yeah, you are audible, but the thing is that we can hear echoes. Um, can you please say something so that we might evaluate are you audible or not? Hi there. Uh, um, Mahbub, do you think it's okay? I think the, he is not that much audible. There are some issues, I guess. Uh, Ashwin, do, you, do you, you can you make him do come you a bit closer? Yeah, yeah. Can I you please move a bit closer? Closer. Yeah. And now am I audible? Yeah, yeah. I think this will do, yeah. This will do, yeah. Uh, all right, so I guess... Tashfin, I think you're facing some issues with your audibility. Do you have a microphone or a headphone or maybe okay. an earphone? Let me try this. Um, am I audible right now? Perfect, yes. perfect. You are perfectly audible. Yeah, so say what uh, you were going to say. Yeah, uh, so... Uh, in case of public speaking, someone's going to think, like the judges and those who are listening to my speech, the whole story I'm going to say in the next four minutes are true. And it based on my life, so I will tell you the topic. That's why it's not actually just for the sake of speaking. It's my real life that I'm going to be present in front of you in the next four minutes. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to look forward to it. So with that being said, I think your time will start in three, two, and one. 29th July, 2015, two o'clock at night. The night was silent, but I could not hear the breathing of my mother. The clock was ticking, but her heart was not beating. I was awake, but my mother was asleep forever. And from that very day, when I lost my mother, my father started to take bribes. He started bribery to feed me. But fortunately, that bribery was not measured in money. That bribery was measured in hope. Hope that taught me to run away from that imperfect past of mine. Hope to fight that image and that shadow of ours, hope that made me run towards light. And from that day, I started to learn, just like my father, there are many mothers whose son doesn't have any father. There are many orphans who neither has father nor has mother. There are many cobblers who fix millions of shoes, but doesn't want any. There are many day laborers who struggle a lot but earns a little. There are many day labor and child laborers who work by the side of their school, but never went to there. And just like that, everyone, just like my father, there are fathers, mothers, day laborers, child laborers, cobblers, who, who have one thing in common, that imperfect past of theirs. A past is just like the shadow of our life. No matter how much dark the shadow is, it's ours. No matter how much deep that past is, it's ours. No matter how much fast we keep running away from our own shadow, it will remain ours. 
No matter how much fast we keep running away from our past, it remains ours. But still, still, we keep running, we keep fighting for that perfection in our happiness. We keep running to turn our perfectly imperfect past into imperfectly perfect future. A future where there is our past, but no darkness. Where there is hope, but no despair. Where there is the morning light, but no shadow. And that's why, just like everyone, just like my own father, just like my own life, I have learned one thing, to take bribes. That bribe that is not measured in money, but that bribe that is measured in hope. One minute left. Because it's hope that gives us. Because that hope, we use it to for a better future, a future where there is darkness, where there is light. And just like that, every time in our life, we use that bribes that my father used. We use that hope in our life to fight our shadows sometimes, to fight our past sometimes, to fight our darkness, and to thrive towards the light, to surge towards light, to surge to our future and let our shadow fall behind. Thank you. you know, to be honest, I felt that. I think I kind of felt that. It was awesome. Uh, Tanjim, please. Your speech was great. I really loved it personally. I don't know, maybe. Uh, all right, just leave that. Uh, we are going to go for questions. And I can already say, looking at the screen, that Alif, sir, has a question, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, I do, I do. Um, I mean, without giving much away, I guess, I actually remember you. You were my delegate in UNSC, with, along with Tanjim. I remember you. You were yes, in sir, there. I was a case, sir. Yeah, yeah, you were a case. I remember that even. Okay, all right. So, um, um, sorry for your loss, uh, but... You know, when people say that they're sorry for someone's loss, I believe that it's a formality people does because the ability to empathize is something not many of us can have. And you cannot empathize with someone experience yourself. But regardless, like, sorry for your loss. And yeah, that was, I guess your speech came, the, in my personal opinion, came the closest to the topic, how you drew parallel. So... My question to you would be, you talked about no matter how much we try to run away and how much that past always lives with us and that past never leaves us, right? So it's my question would be to you, what would be your suggestion to get rid of that past? Do you think we should, first of all, do you, do you think we should get rid of that past or do we, should we have that past always? Uh, because it will always acts as a remainder of, the loss that we had so that, you know, in the future, we are more grateful for what we have now. Or do you think that that past, having that past in our back of our mind acts as a burden and we should learn to let that go and move on and move on with the hope, like you said, and let that past go because the past and the hope that you're talking about, they contradict each other. So what do you think gets more priority at the end of the day? Well, uh, uh, sir, I will give an example of yours, like your example, suppose. Suppose you were in a month, uh, M -E so you got the best delegate in the previous month, but this time you became a special mention. Special mention. And the mm -hmm. next M -E you are going to do, you're going to give it the full power, the past that hurts you, mm -hmm. that fuels you, mm -hmm. that runs you. Answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't think I have anything more to say than that because I can. Uh, he he. Yeah, I can. I can relate to what you just said. So yeah, thank you so much for the answer. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ali Pai and Tashfin. I can see Rafsan by raising his hand. Be prepared, Tashfin. All right, so the floor goes to Rafsan Bay. I want more questions. Okay, that's a positive attitude. I really like that. I appreciate that. And um, uh, I, I cannot say in any way I can empathize with yourself, but uh, yeah, I am really sorry for your loss. I can never imagine my life without my mom. But yeah, it was a very touching speech and 
you do have a lot of good points. We are all running away from the past, right? So every, every we know the saying that every priest has a past and every thief has a future at the end of the day. So yeah, we are all running from the past and, and the past stays with us as a baggage. Given that the past itself is bad or tragic. If you have a good past, it doesn't, it, 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 it you know, lifts you up the ladder. So my question to you is that, what, I mean, how, how would you deal with a baggage or a past that does not let you go forward, that does not let you move forward? Say for, uh, say for example, I'll, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you an example that um, someone who has committed a federal crime cannot engage in a lot of activities that no matter how much he wants, no matter how much he dedicates his life to it, okay? You know, if someone who has committed a federal crime or uh, he goes up and starts helping the poor, he will always be questioned no matter how much he tries or his good intentions are. How would a person handle this sort of baggage with them? Well, I will start with the inverted comma that you fall to learn how to get up, inverted comma. And that's what it is, like our past pushed us away and failed to learn how to get up tomorrow. And that those bad striking past of those people, those criminals taught them how to be a better person tomorrow because it's our society who needs to accept it or to reject it. But it, the lesson was given by the past. The teaching were given and it's up to you whether you use that baggage as a training instrument to learn how to run with that baggage or to use it as just a burden and stop running. Up to you, sir. Wonderful answer. Damit, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right, I guess that answers the question. Do we have any more questions? I don't see anyone. So I guess yeah. So guys, uh, if you are feeling, if you are depressed, and if you are looking for some motivation to just knock Ashwin someday, he's gonna provide you something good. So whatever. Do we have Adnan Sakib sure. Mahbub? Sure, Can you present sure. Hey, Kanjin. Uh, before we move on, um, so the Excel sheet that you guys provided us, the serial number and the serial number they have here are a bit different. So since I was reaching the end, I just, you know, sorted them out in a descending order. Um, I think there might, I am facing some issues. So has Nasif Alvi Hawk, has he spoken yet? He was the first speaker. He was the first speaker, right? Okay. Yes. All right. See, everything has been messed up. Because the serial number you guys have given me are not the same as, okay. Uh, what about Mahir Faisal? Has he spoken? Wait, Mahir, Mahir Faisal, Faisal is not present. He's he's not present. Oh, he's not present. Yeah, he's not here today. And Adnan Sakib? And no, he's the one yet. you're waiting for. The last oh, he's the one you're waiting for. All right. Okay, 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 okay. All right. Uh, okay, no. then it's fine. You can go ahead. Okay. I still okay. don't see Adnan Sakib amongst us because he had some issues in his area about the electricity, but... Uh, all right, Mahbub, could you do one thing? Could you try and contact him? Maybe? Wait a bit more for him. But can wait a bit. All right, just contact him. Just yeah. contact him. And if we see that he's available, then we're going to bring him very soon. Yes. Just to, just to be clear, we did not have speaker number 9 and 12 as of yet. Am I correct? Uh, yes, we did not have speaker number nine and speaker number 12. Yes. I mean, exactly, yes. Speaker number nine and speaker number 12. Okay, all and right. The chronology of the yeah, yeah, yeah. The chronology we are following in this Zoom meeting, according to that, number nine and 12 has not spoken as of yet. Yes, according to yes. Zoom, it, actually, this serial was provided just for speaking, you know, the mark sheet is another oh. thing. Uh, Okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it. And, and speaking of internet issues, you already see that it's a blackout around here. Leave Adnan Sakib, worry more about me. So 
what range he is using his laptop very well so to tell he bought this laptop 2 days ago and now literally dances with this laptop sleeps with this laptop eats on top of it it's screen touch laptop mahbub just say you can afford it come on dude uh uh panjim just just help me out here bro yes yes little, sure sure little more uh satban asan uh Well, he was the speaker who gave the speech on exact. Can you just tell me that what was his speech based on, like, so that I can just fix the marking? Sadban oh. Asan. He's yeah. He's from Mijapur Mij- Cadet College. Uh, ah yeah. yes yes yes. Uh, Mahbub, what was his what was um, his speech again? I think I think we can give Sadban Asan again the floor to explain. Oh yeah, Sadban Asan. What what was your speech again? Yeah. Sadban, are you there? The speech. Each was about racism and fixed yes, yes. social beliefs. All oh, right. Okay. 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 All right. Then. Okay. Uh, Oxford. Oxford. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's okay. It's okay. No. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Everything is fine. All right. I guess yeah. everything is fine. So, Rafi, do we have Adnan Sakib? Unfortunately, we can't have him. So I guess we have. We don't really have anything to do over here, but we can do one thing. I guess. Um, if the judges are kind enough to mark him later on, we can ask yeah. the video. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Um, then we are just gonna ask him for a video, and then uh, we're gonna send it to a group where we'll at at the judges so that they can evaluate it. Is that okay? Um. Rafi Sandhai. Okay. I will set a time for him, and if he can manage within that time, then we will take it. Otherwise, not. Exactly, exactly. It's perfect. It's uh, perfect. If Raf Sandhai wants to say something, he's having some issues. I, I just guess. have one query about it. Um, how will you be ensure that? Just give me a minute. Uh, so okay. my query okay. was, how can you ensure? That, how can you ensure that it will be his first take? So that that's the. concern that i have you know when you're speaking live on a zoom you have to do good in your first time i mean when it's recorded you know if it goes bad you can re-record it again and then send it so that would put the other participants at a rather disadvantage i guess so take that into account when you like you know send us the video or or what what you can do is arrange another zoom meeting with them okay and uh, you make sure that you're recording it yourself and then send it to us i guess that would be a much better option um, yeah, the yeah, that's that's good. yeah that sounds good that sounds good that is not all right there all right that sounds good perfect perfect thank you thank you very much rap sang oh i'm back <laughs> so um i think we are finished with all of the participants and i guess that was all for interrupt. i don't mean to interrupt but actually i had something to say If you give them another session, wouldn't they be getting more time than us? We all got six hours. Wouldn't they technically be getting more than us? Uh, I guess when it comes to delays, you cannot consider everything. But the thing is that he cannot change his content right now, can he? Because uh, well, everything was provided. Excuse me. Um, may I? Yes, please. Who raised the question, please? Um, it was Sar- Sarah. Mashia. Sarah Mashia. Sarah Mashia. Uh, as I told before, I will set a time, a definite time for him, as there is no electricity in his home. So I will set a uh, more thirty minutes to him. If he can manage within the thirty minutes, then we will accept it. Otherwise, we are not. So there is no worries. And I think thirty minutes will not make any issues. Ah uh, yes, that makes it like, clear. Uh, I think it's completely okay. So we're gonna get his video. We're gonna ask for him and his. And at another Zoom session at twelve fifteen, I guess, twelve fifteen or twelve ten. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds perfect. All right. So with that being said, I think we are done with all our participants over here, and we are almost done, except for the part where we get to hear a few words of wisdom from our judges. So we are really honored to have them. I mean, it's like well, they are not c- coming here. They are not like they are not. Coming here for their own benefit, rather they're coming here as they look down upon us as their younger brother, and they really want us to prosper in our future days to come. That's why they lend their valuable time to us. We are really very proud. We of are really time. grateful. Very, yeah. very grateful for having you. People. And and Thank this you is the so place. Much. And this is the place where we go out of adjectives. 
Uh, exactly. This is the place where you go out of objectives as our previous live sessions. So whatever, leave yeah. it aside. We're going to move on to our first judge. Um, Muqsetul Islam Alif, sir, do you have anything to address? Do you have any good wishes or anything you want to say? Uh, I, I, I don't want to prolong myself because I know everyone's itching to go back, go to their beds and do whatever because it's been very, very long and hectic. So I'm not going to prolong. I'm just going to thank Tanjim and uh, his team for making me a part of it. Like, um, I, I guess I would just say this, like, uh, I say this at every MUN or every event I go to, uh, there's no end to learning, uh, no matter, even if you're a judge, you're also learning something from the speakers. And I guess that holds true for today as well, because some of the speeches, uh, especially some of the last few speeches, I it, quite, it put a lot of things for me in perspective that I thought about differently. So I guess that's what it's all about, uh, inter-learning process, you know? So thank you to the speakers. All of you are good in your own ways. And uh, it, it, it would suck if you don't get your desired award, I know. So I'm not going to fake about it. I'm not going to fake. And I'm like, hey, participation matters and not. But hey, here's the thing. All of you talked about hope. But so, yeah, you keep that hope inside you. And, you know, use this failure to push you forward. It's okay to regret. It's okay to have that regret. That regret is going to push you forward the next time you do it. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty much from pretty much from me. Uh, and once again, thank you to everyone for okay. having me. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah. I uh, was using that, I point. Maybe, maybe not. All right. Uh, okay, that's that's it from me. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. We are really proud to have you. We can never express that. All right, whatever. Uh, we next, we have next, yeah. Our, yes, yes, I guess. Our very beloved. You go on. <laughs> so um, we have our next judge. Where is he? And he has been turning up the video all the time. I don't know what he was doing. Okay, whatever. We have our second judge, Waris Aziz Akash. Right, thank you so much. Am I audible? Yes, so you I'm, are audible. But, all right. Uh, all right. So like, I'll be very honest with everyone here. Like, I'm not a legendary public speaker. I'm not even a new public speaker. Like, Raf Sunbay or, like, Siam or Deep Pro or, like, they're, like, much more, like, far better than, like, I am in public speaking. So, like, thank you so much for having me here. Like, I, I was really honored and humbled to be a part, like, of, like, not as a judge, but to witness, to hear all these speakers, like, to be honest, I was more of a learner, and to be honest, I was I had so much more to get, get gain from this, like you know, judging people here. So, like uh, I'm more used to listening to in, like uh, like people talking about foreign policies, people talking about international bilateral agreements, but I I have never got to uh, listen to uh, personal. Uh, people talking about their personal life, personal feelings, and like uh, various uh, da daily, you know, daily encounters they have, like aesthetic or hypothetical situations. Like this, this is something very new to me. So, uh, like this, is, uh, this was my first time judging uh, the finals of an online uh, public speaking competition. So, thank you so much for having me. Like this is a, this was a life lesson for me as well. Like I'm really honored and I'm really happy to see so much talented. Uh, public speakers in online platform like it was no less than witnessing like uh, like live public speaking like uh, back in college when like uh, Tanjim was giving speeches back in class seven uh, or eight as a public speaking English extempore speech like like it's no less than that and I really felt like home and thank you so much for having me for giving me the uh, experience of witnessing such an amazing initiative taken by Omanako. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Akash, for your words of wisdom and words which really hit my heart. Uh, all right, we're going to move on to our next judge. We have Siam Shahid Noor from Harvard University. Sir, would you like to address a few words of wisdom? Sir, wisdom, words of wisdom. Words of wisdom. That's hard. <laughs> but I'm just saying thank you for organizing this competition. It takes a lot of effort for all the organizers and everyone involved to organize something which is 
extremely logistically difficult given the circumstances we are in. Although there are a few benefits, I guess, of organizing it online, one being that you don't have to worry about the physical space and also food and um, other accommodations for judges, participants and whatnot. So it's a trade-off, it's an active trade-off and there are benefits and uh, I guess cons uh, on each side. That being said, um, I wanna congratulate all the participants. I was really amazed by the amount of effort that they put in into their speeches. A lot of them were speaking from their hearts and I really appreciate that. A lot of them spoke about positive traits, about a positive mindset, about working hard, about having hope. I really hope they get to practice what they have been preaching so far, because um, the way I see these competitions such as public speaking or debating or MUNs, they don't become something of its own. Very hardly will you become a debater who kind of makes their living through debating or who kind of uh, turns MUN into a profession. Um, and the same could be said for public speaking. What these skills do, however, do for you is that they help you achieve great things in fields. And these are some trades that will help you throughout all your life. And I hope you keep that in mind because a lot of you will walk away, if I'm being honest, without any awards. And um, if you were to take a participation award and whatnot, that doesn't really mean much when you uh, give so much effort. It, it will feel like a downer. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind is that this award will only mean so much in the long span of things. If you have won it, congrats. You got what you deserve for your efforts. But even if you don't, the key takeaway is that you are taking this opportunity as something which helps you to grow traits that are going to help you a lot in almost any field you go to. So please uh, practice what you have been preaching. And that is, my, that is my simple request to you. Another thing I would like to mention is that I wish I had known something when I was uh, like at least 10 years younger is that the easiest way or not, not the easiest, the simplest way to be really good at something is to practice it again and again. And if you want to be good at communication or if you want to be good at music or just insert any skill over here, you have to do it again and again. And one way to do that is through um, practicing in competition, going to events and taking the time to put effort into doing these things. You can only be a good speaker if you practice speaking again and again. And I hope you, the participants and the uh, judges and the organizers, all of you had to speak your fair share. I think um, organizing a public speaking competition is more of a speaking practice than being a speaker in itself because you have to speak Thank so you. much <laughs> and everyone's kind of looking at you like, hey, you're the organizer, you know, you should have the best public speaking practices. So to all those involved in this, I, I even for me, I always take situations like this as a platform to really hone my speaking skills. So for all those involved, I hope you get the time to practice speaking in different forms because your audience and your purpose changes as you change roles in a competition. So I hope for the speakers, one day you organize or be judges. And for the organizers, I hope you take the time to be speakers once again in the future, because that is the only way you can develop a skill which is as crucial to your success in life as public speaking and keep up the great work. That was a lot. I hope you found this useful. Thank you once again for having me. It will always be an honor. Um, uh, he said that delivering words of wisdom is going to be hard and what he did was 100% all right and great. Senpai, and I'll vote for you. All right, Mahapu, you have the rest. So we move on. let's move on to our next judge. It's Mr. Saqib Ahmed. So Saqib Bhai, any concluding remarks, anything you want to say, you want to share? So I'm going to keep my speech really short because uh, just like one of our participants said that 
uh, their pa- her parents actually said that if you don't wake up you are going to die i am pretty sure my parents are going to say the same <laughs> thing tomorrow to me uh, so this uh, public speaking is a very important tool actually because when you actually go in different fields uh, it's not that you actually have to have that your field is basically focused on public speaking rather in every field you need to actually express your ideas and thoughts to your surrounding people so public speaking is a very important thing so i believe that we should keep this goal in mind that what public speaking is doing is actually giving us a tool to actually better communicate with our surrounding people so that i think i believe is the ultimate goal that we should actually put forward in our mind and the most important thing i believe that a public speaker should do is that when he actually goes on stage i believe he should actually enjoy more himself he should be happy he should chill in the stage is what i want to say is that when he goes on the stage he should actually be more comfortable in the stage by being happy and projecting the true self on the, then actually i believe that he will not only be happy but he, his speech will be more comfortable and at the same time uh, his ideas will be shared more fluently so uh, this is actually the last thing i would like to say with this i have no more remarks uh, more experienced people are waiting to speak right now and finally i would like to say that it was a great experience for me uh, from the speeches i learned a lot of things i have to say so i would like to conclude here and thanks for having me thank you very much for it were very very nice words so let's move on to our fifth judge mr rafsan mahbub choudhury rafsan bhai any concluding remarks anything you want to share with us all um thank you mahbub and tanzim uh, and saban for like inviting me in this in this like online public speaking competition i was a bit reluctant first uh, for not being a judge because obviously it, it is a lot of work on a judge part but i thank god i said yes and i i actually found the time to judge this mm. contest because, i mean i would be regretting a lot if i saw the live that this was this would go like this well and i would learn so much from here and one thing that i would want to add is each and every participant here it doesn't matter whether you are a finalist or not it doesn't matter whether you have won or not you have learned a few crucial things number one is time management preparing a speech in 6 6 hours you need to know how to manage time you have to be able to think on your feet say for example you plan that you would be speaking uh, this paragraph at the end but you ran out of time you had to think on your feet and you had to improve improve your speech right then and there if you had to then you did learn to answer questions i mean this is something uh, this is a grooming pro- process that goes on you learn to answer to questions you probably have not expected probably you did some of them you did not expect this is something that would teach you to think on your feet immediately you you do not have a minute to think you just have probably 2 to 3 seconds and you were supposed to speak this is something you would be learning no courses would be able to teach you all these things finally i mean i've been mean, participating in the in a contest like this not only grooms public speaking capabilities it does not groom your communication abilities it grooms a lot of other aspects that you're not even aware of unless you start working with communication the way i i do finally say for example you won don't stop there it's it's not the end of the road you did, did not win don't stop there it's not the end of the road why am i saying this it does relate to the topic itself i'm saying this because you might be young i mean most of the participants here are still studying they're probably at the university or college or school but one thing that you look realize when you go up to after finishing your university or or in your first job or first full time corporate job or first your a business or something that you're do, doing you'll realize that thank god you know how to you know the art of public speaking like thank god you know this because if you do not know it you won't be able to make your boss understand how, why your idea is better than his idea you won't be able to think on your feet unless you you have the skills groomed inside you i mean nobody is a born speaker 
Some of them are, but you know, nobody's a born speaker. You need, there's skills that you need to groom yourself. Somebody, some people learn this fast. Some people just don't learn, learn this fast. But having these abilities, you've got no idea how much is going to help you. I still remember my first day at court. I mean, me being a lawyer, my first day at court, um, I was not wearing my red tie. When you're an apprentice lawyer, you have to wear this red tie, which uh, differentiates you, you from actual lawyers, actual advocates. So the, I was not wearing a red tie. I was wearing a blue one. So the judge actually said to me, why are you wearing a blue tie? You cannot enter the courtroom uh, wearing a blue tie. Are you an apprentice lawyer? So, you know, me having the ability, me being able to think on my feet, uh, I came up with the answer that uh, I am an apprentice lawyer, but in this case, I am here as just an audience. So I do not require that anymore. So, you know, the, these are the things that you will need when you actually enter the corporate world. I mean, you need to play some games. So these skills will help you so very much at the end of your road or in between your road or the start, the beginning of your road, you cannot even imagine. So all the very best. And I hope the best one wins. And I hope that you guys all flourish in your lives and just don't stop here just because you haven't won or just because you have won. Thank you very much uh, for organizing this and inv inviting me as a judge. Thank you, Vai. Thank you very much to you to come to have joined us. Thank you very much. It means a lot. Okay, so to our sixth judge and final judge, it's Deep Prapruttoy. So Deep, any last concluding remarks, anything you want to share with us all? Please go on. Towards yours. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled by this entire gesture that Omako has provided to me in the first place because I'm considering that I'm uh, probably the youngest person in this judging panel, but I won't even say youngest, but I think I am the most uh, less worthy one considering the the fifth previous people have done some amazing things in my in their lives. Like when it comes to MUNs, I have uh, Ali Bhai and Waris Bhai shaping me up every single day. When it comes to public speaking, I have Rafsan Bhai shaping me up every single day. When it comes to my university life and being someone who I want to be, I have Siam Bhai helping me every single day. And of course, there's this one person I never got to interact, but Saki Bhai, I promise you this, that hopefully in the coming days, we will be meeting, we will be having a cup of coffee somewhere. And I, I'm really uh, looking forward to that day. And I've heard a lot about you, but somehow the interaction did not happen. But I believe that we will be getting to that position. But I yeah, love that too. Um, definitely, bro. And the treat is on you because you are senior. But yeah, jokes aside, um, I would just want to say that... Um, <laughs> Honestly, the main reason people underestimate the entire art of public speaking is because they try to incorporate this uh, art into profession. So people say that, why do engineers require public speaking? Why do uh, doctors require public speaking? But at the end of the day, even in this room, we have a very good example that Rafsan Bhai, who has a law background and a business background, is doing public speaking. Siam Bhai, who has an applied mathematics and neuroscience background, is doing uh, public speaking. So at the end of the day, it is it does not shape up your uh, uh, like job sector. It rather shapes up your character and builds your personality brick by brick. The entire concept of speaking up your heart and representing yourself in an institution. And yeah, based on today's performance, honestly, um, I had high expectations because we had the best of the best of this entire nation. And of course, they did uh, enlighten me and they did instill in me a new concept, a new idea for how to look into this topic from a different perspective. And yeah, that is what I'm saying. Every single day, you guys need to work hard and to become the best person of yourself. And when it comes to a specific thing like public speaking, of course, um, there is something known as IPSC, where we have a lot of champions, national and internationals present over here. But I being from an English medium background and considering the fact that O-levels and A-levels happen in May, June, I was unable to attend uh, uh, most of the sessions and this really hurts. And that is the reason uh, I am um, looking forward to other opportunities in the field of public speaking. But honestly, this night was amazing. And as um, the person said, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, after winning like the Oscar after 10 to 12 years of waiting, he started talking about climate change. And at, at the end, he said one thing which I want to emphasize tonight. Uh, let us do not take anything for granted. I do not take tonight for granted. And in the words of Robert Frost, uh, the woods are lovely, dark, early, but I have promises to keep and I have miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Thank you so much. 
mix through it. It's touched. All right. So at the end, I would like to say to Panjim. Panjim, if you want to say anything. Hi, are you there or are you Hi, eating right now? Distress. <laughs> I can't say anything right now. Sorry, not in front of these people. Sorry, I don't belong here. We gotta move on, dear. <laughs> All right. I th I think we, I think there is this thing that um as we're gonna go to that later on. Abdon Sakib, you please stay with us. All right. Um. So with that being said, I think we can move on to the next person who will be speaking right now. He is the CEO of Oemako. Who has been, who has not been sleeping for seven days, but has been sleeping for seven nights very well. So we have That's our very CEO. Bad. I know. I I I, I suck at you. I really suck <laughs> very bad. <laughs> hey, it's really not fine. Okay, thanks uh, a lot, uh, Tanjim Bhai. Um, it's really serious. hard to speak in front of these people because they're uh, in a he here level, and I'm here. You cannot see my level there. So first of all, I should congratulate all the participants, all the finalists, because they are the talented public speakers who own this. Um, I mean, who have able to come here out of about one thousand participants. So congratulations to all of them. Then uh, thanks a lot to all the respected judges, because without you guys, definitely, I must say, without you, all six of you, this competition would not come to. At this stage, because we are having you amongst us in this final as our advisors, as our educators, so I must thank you guys. Uh, thanks a lot, especially all you, all of you six judges. Uh, then, if I sh say about something about Omeco, then Omeco is online event management and charity organization. We work for the poor peoples. Like you can see around us, there are a lot of people who cannot manage. Meal for two, uh, two times meal in a day. Who cannot manage money for the studies? Who cannot bear the expenses of treatment? So we will try to help them, and we will try to help them by our fund. That we got um, a good fund from this event by the registration fees of the campus ambassadors, and we transferred all the monies to our charity fund, and we will donate those monies to the helpless peoples and the poor people of Bangladesh. And the last, if I want to say something, that Omeco is a new organization that is we launched this page or organization in the last April, and this is our first event that is OPSC online public speaking competition, which had two sections. One is for Bangla, and one is this the English one. And today in the afternoon we had the final of Bangla, and now we are sitting here for the English. So what I am trying to say. It, as it was our first event and a very new organization, so there were a lot of mistakes that we committed, and there were lack of communications, there were lack of uh, responsibilities. So, I really hope that considering as a new organization, we will pardon us and overlook our mistakes. And if anything that hurts you, by me, by my organization, or by my people, the core members, then I'm humbly request you. We are sorry. We're really sorry for this. And the most important thing is, I learned a lot of things. Yes, as it was our first event, I learned a huge amount of things: how to handle a people, how to handle a lot of participants, how to handle the campus ambassadors, how to handle a core team with ten members, and just how to supervise all of the things. And I must say, it was a huge learning for me and a huge opportunity for me to. Host such kind of great event, and I must say we are lucky because as it's our first event, I believe it's quite good. I guess. So, with this, again, I'm sorry for our for our failures, and thanks to the judges for their advices and for cooperating with us. I hope you will stay with us. You will stay connected with Omeco. And one last thing that is, we're hosting one more event that's already launched. That is. OYVMU1, OMAC International Virtual Model in United Nations. So, if you want, you can have a look to this also. And for the participants, um, that's hats off you guys. You were really good, and you had a really great speeches tonight. But have patience. We will declare the results tonight, uh, tomorrow, at 7:45 p.m. That's all from my side. Thanks a lot once again. All right. So before we just end it. 
I want to say a few words to all those who were watching us all the whole time and enjoyed this grand finale. So I want to say a few words that I recently encountered some things which actually are now roaming inside my head. So in our country, you know, there are a lot of situations, a lot of things which kind of threaten us, kind of threaten ourselves, our wives, sisters, our mothers. And so no matter how much we say we are independent, but at the end, we are still not free. We fear a lot. We, we are afraid of a lot of things in our society. So I would say to all the people out there, please speak up. You have ideas which can save life, which can help a lot of people out of their miseries. So speak up. You know, I, I quote a wo some words of Winston Churchill. He once said that fear is a reaction and courage is a decision. I, I like this quote a lot because everyone gets afraid at first.